thank you, Tanzanite, for the 11 months. I appreciate. I don't know why I'm talking like this. I'm going to turn up the alerts because they're very, really quiet. So I'm going to do a test, uh, j just, just be aware, just be aware, hang on, let me, let me save these. so you can hear me. This is part of the show. All right. I'm 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 just still getting things ready. Oh, this one's up all the way. It's not even that loud. the same. Um, oh, there's a, there's variations that I need to do. Um, edit. Here, no, we gotta make this one loud. This one's important. Here you go. I think that's good. Wait. Hold on. Hey, Moon Pie, why are you scratching? Okay, one more. This is also a testo. That's got to be a bit loud. All right. All right. I think we're better. I think we're better. I'm going to I'm going to turn this off again. I just wanted to fix that before I forgot about it.
Okay, hello for real. How is everyone? How are we doing this fine Saturday? I'm doing pretty good, honestly. I'm pretty- I'm, I had some- some friends. I had some friends visit. And, uh, we went and got some food at the farmer's market. And it was nice. We had a good time. So I'm- I'm feeling pretty pumped. I'm a little- a little sleepy. A little- a little tired. Not too bad. Kind of like that good tired, you know, when you have a good day and then you're just like relaxed. That kind of tired. It's a good kind of tired. I like it. Anyway. Anyway, happy September. It is game dev, game dev month for me. Every stream is going to be game dev time. Also, this is my favorite song from, from Cult of the Lamb. It's so good. The little plucks. Sounds like a spider. Sounds like spiders. I love it. It makes me think of spiders, at least. It doesn't... I don't know, I've never seen a spider and heard it make the plucking noise of a string instrument. Can't stay for too long, but wanted to say hi and support all your game dev endeavors. Haha. <laughs> endeavors. <laughs> oh, it's September now. It's getting colder, uh, because fall is coming up. So, uh, you know what? How about, how about I, uh... How about I slip into something a bit more comfortable? I will be right back. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I swear, I'll be right back. Give me a minute. Almost done. Almost done. Howdy. I return, and I am now in autumn wear. Good afternoon, Capri. My game devers. You know what? I like that. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute. But, um, I will only hold- keep you guys for just a tiny bit in my little opening spiel. But, you'll notice, there's no donation goal this month. There's a September goal. Because it's September, and you know what that means? That means subs and gift subs can be up to 30% off. So if you've been meaning to sub or gift sub, I mean, thanks to Queen of Snarf, this is pretty much a sub-only chat at this point. Uh, but if you would like to gift sub anybody you think would like my content, uh, now is the perfect time to subscribe to me because you can join the Discord if you have your Twitch connected. Uh, you can have sub and patron, or you can have access to sub and patron exclusive chats in my Discord. So you can see concept art, you can see time lapses that normally only patrons would be able to see, but now subscribers can also see it. So now would be the time to sub, to gift sub, yeah. Hello Thursday, yeah, I have a new fit. It's Halloween appropriate. Hold on, let me take a drink. Let me take a drink, this is important. Be oh, oh, Janie, 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 you just moved. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. That truly helps a lot. We are at 73 now. And just like with the monthly donations, every $50, we can do a giveaway. Every 50 subs, I mean, my bad, not $50. Every 50 subs, we can do a giveaway. Um, and do you, you, you all know, you all know about the giveaway, right? Oh, it's so quiet. You know, let me turn down Spotify a bit. Maybe it's just Spotify that's really loud. I don't know. It seems pretty. Okay, yeah, it was pretty loud. Never mind. Uh, anyway, I will bring out the roulette. I will bring out the the wheel, the wheel of fun. When we get to 100 subscribers, I will bring the wheel out. We can spin it. We can have a giveaway. Whatever it lands on, you get a sticker pack of that, and then um, freaking uh, Nightbot can select a random active chat member, and then you get your stickers. Yeah, yeah, but thank you so much, Janie, Lady Lanaya, Dragon Planty, Always For Gore, Gazelle Anim, and Masho. Enjoy your gift subs. Enjoy your gift subs. I don't know if you got you guys are here, but I know at least some of you have been here. Uh, but yeah, that is all I really needed to say before jumping in to uh to my stuff. But definitely got a new fit. We got a new fit. We're in season. 
wait, did I did I take a sip from my water? Or did I get distracted by the gifts up? Hold on, let me take a sip from my water. It was important that I showed you what mug I had today. The background looks so good. Thank you. I was about to uh, talk about what we're doing today. Today, today, we are uh, most likely going to be finishing Zale's room, which I started a few days ago. Um, as you as you can see, um, we started that a few days ago, and uh, it is almost done. You could probably tell it's almost done. It just needs some shading. Just needs a bit more touching up. Just uh, just some like little flavor. Maybe we can add a little bit more into this background if you guys have any neat ideas. But this is Zale's room. If that isn't apparent enough, it is very water themed. Uh, I've seen this place in my dreams probably. Um, another background if we end up finishing this a little early. Check it out. Ezra. I started Ezra's room. Uh, let me let me tell you a secret about how I make these backgrounds. I make them in The Sims, and then I draw over them. Psychic mug attack. Yeah, that's what that is. Hold on, let me let me uh, perform some psychic damage on all of my followers. I got a drink from Sans's head. Gotta go now. Have an excellent stream. You have an excellent rest of your day, Janie. Thank you for stopping by. But. I'm glad you guys like the new fit. Unfortunately, while I have my giant ass tablet up, you're not gonna be able to see my bones. Feeling the effects, very good. Very good. Also, I, I got this uh, spud tablet thing working. If you haven't checked that out, ch check this out. You can see my hand. You can see my hand on the tablet. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? Isn't that so cool? Probably gonna be using this for uh, a future form that may be coming super soon. So get, look forward to that. I'm really excited about that. I'm so excited about that, honestly. Oh my God. But yeah, this is our background that we will be working on today. But first, but first, as always, we gotta do a little warm up. So this here, if you've seen Poultrayer in the chat, uh, Poultrayer has been following me for several years, probably 10, and has always been the first patron, or was the first patron I ever had, and also the first Twitch subscriber I ever had. Um, coming up here, Poultrayer will have been a patron of mine for six years, if you can believe that. Let me, let me check, let me make sure, hold on, hold on. I, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Six years. I actually di did this cameo pretty recently. Uh, Poultry has been ar around so long that uh, that they have a um, cameo in my first comic. Not my first comic. My last comic that I made. Um, they are like one of the first like uh, characters that shows up that isn't a main character. Literally, they're on like the second page. That's how long Poultry has been around. So I am going to redraw as like a, a thank you. Because uh, every year, if you are on the cameo tier, I will redraw your cameo. That's what I've been, This is something I've started this year because I've wanted to update the art and also do like a little thank you. Like, hey, it's your patriversary. Six years. Yeah, Poultry is a real one. Poultry like has been around so long i got poultry into the once their fandom that is how long poultry has been around that's insane that is insane probably longer like i talked about the once -ler enough that poultry was like what why do you keep talking about the once -ler? hold on i'm gonna move my mic it's gonna sound weird okay so anyway let's do a warm-up and then we can get into that listen listen I, I know I have converted at least one person, and it was Poultry. You what? Converted. I was like, hey, have you heard of our lord and savior, the Onceler? Listen. The Onceler fandom was weird. It was very strange. 
That was probably the last fandom I was ever in. Like, truly. Um, personally, I think the best way to consume media is uh, by yourself or with a small group of people. Okay, my, my mic is just in the way. Yeah, Capri, I know you were also in it, but I didn't even meet you through that. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I much prefer, like, enjoying things by myself. Maybe watching some theory videos. Those can be fun. Okay, how do I want to redraw this is, is the thing. Because this is fairly recent. What I can do is I can flip this. Okay, one thing I don't like about this is how far the shoulder is out. Look at this. Look at this. This is absurd. Look how far this goes out. And here's the neck. This is uneven. Okay, this is unacceptable. So let's, uh, let's... Fix this a little bit. Sorry for my burp. I had some buffalo chicken uh, fries, and it was delicious. Uh, let me also look at my tablet like a human. Let me tilt that a little bit. I'm literally going sane. I can't believe you converted them to the Onceler. Listen. I can. What's funny is I feel like I was converted to the Onceler before I even saw the Lorax. Okay, that is like the one big difference I would like to make. Um, let's see if, if there's like... I feel like even recent art, it's pretty, it's pretty fun to like go back and like make modifications if you can find ways to like improve upon them. So this is this is pretty fun. This is gonna be pretty exciting. I think I want to make this ear go like up a little bit. So you think it'd be cool if it was going uh going a little back like that? This is also Poltrer's government assigned fursona. Um, this tail is pretty neat, but I think it could be floofier. I think it could be fluffier. What is this? This is Little Nightmares. That's fine. I'm in- I'm in a horror mood. The- the- the spooky time is upon us. I stand by the fact that the Onceler fandom thrived at all because the Lorax was a bad movie. And the only good part about the Lorax was the Onceler. And not because he was, like, attractive or anything, because he, he really, he really, like, in the eyes of, like, early 20-year-olds and, like, teenagers, yeah, of course he was attractive. He was a, he was a, he was a beanpole twink. Um, but also, like, the how bad can I be sequence was, like, so well animated and, uh, and done. This song kind of sucked, but it was catchy. Um, however, that was the best part of the movie, and they kind of skimped out on all the good details. Because, like, the original, the original Lorax, like the book, that was the entire fucking book. The entire book was literally the Lorax being like, hey dude, the Swami Swans can't, Swami Swans can't live here anymore because... The error sucks. And then once there was like, yeah, fuck them. Let them go. Get them out of here. I don't want them here. So they had to leave. Hey, the Barbaloots can't live here anymore. Oh, well, fuck them. They can leave. And I think that those are all the creatures that they had, you know? Okay, anything else? Dude, there's so much going on downtown today. It's pretty awesome. Like... Kind of scary. It's 
probably gonna be like super spreader. But, like I, I was less scared to go out because I mean, recently having COVID, I definitely don't have it anymore, and also I like, so I definitely wouldn't be able to catch it and or spread it to anybody else. So I'm like, you know, I feel safe, and also everything is outside. There's so many people like out and about. There's a car show going on. It's Labor Day weekend. There's a farmer's market, and it's really nice out. It's great. Pretty sure I was converted to the Oncer fandom by being in their little subsection fandom of personifications of sins. Oh god, I remember that. Oh god, I remember that. People, people just really like to personify, like, weird things and also just make a bunch of AUs. Like, if there's a character they really like, it's just like, bam. Speaking of characters that people really like, um, and make a bunch of AUs of them. Yeah, you know, anyway. Anyway. Okay, so I think I got this... Okay, this is more of a fox-like tail, I think. One thing that came with this, uh, this spud tablet thing, Omabob, that I'm using, where you can see my hand, you know, moving with my cursor, um, is there's also another screen where you can see my hand over the canvas, but it, it, it obscures the art too much, so I'm like, nah. Oh yeah, Sans Cup, real. I wanna put this leg in a little bit more because I think that'd be cool. Put this leg a little bit more out. Better beans. Better, better, better beans. Got it. Mmm. Mmm. I'm so sad. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited about game dev month, of course. But I'm also so sad because I really want to play more Cult of the Lamb because I had so much fun in my cult. I had so much fun in my cult. Oh, Capri, you're part of my cult. I forgot, you, you got added like last minute. I say that because I made a role in my Discord server specifically for people who got into the cult. <laughs> and now there there's a there's a secret channel for cultists. It's pretty great. And all all like all we've been saying in it so far is just silly stuff, so you know. It's just, I just thought it would be funny. It came to me in a dream. Just the idea. I don't know if there is any purpose for this channel in my Discord server other than to be silly. But you know, sometimes, sometimes you gotta be silly. Sometimes you just... No, like, I was like half asleep this morning and I thought of that and I was like, you know what? That would be pr pretty funny. I think that would be pretty funny. God, I really hope I can get all the work I can get done um, this month for Mixed Feelings Elysium. And so that way, that way, I can stream so many horror games next month. I really want to play Resident Evil 2. I really want to play Resident Evil 2. I love being part of a cult. It's so fun. It has had no unexpected consequences. Thursday, you've died twice. Twice? 
I can't remember if you've died a third time yet. Have you? I don't know. One time, it was so I could consume your essence because I died to a mini boss. One time, after resurrecting you, I resurrected you just so you could fight Minmo and be killed by Minmo. And then the chat resurrected you because apparently death is not an option in our cult. I think... I. I'm trying to think. Hollow and Janie are the only ones who are dead right now. So... Maybe maybe I can add something to the doctrine that'll make it so nobody gets mad when I resurrect people. Maybe that can be an option. Okay, I don't like the shape of this, this right now. I need to make this... Uh, nicer. There we go. Because I, I still really like this chibi. I just think there's like... There's always ways to refine the art. I kind of want to make it more... A little more angular. A bit more angular. I like... Ooh, I like the shape of that eyelash. I like it. food. Oh man, maybe I'll take a break in the middle of the stream and order food. We can order food. Guys, I'm not hungry right now. What kind of food should I order? I'll give you some options. There's, there's, a uh, there's Greek. There is, a uh, there's Mexican. There's Chinese. There's Thai. There's Vietnamese, more specifically, pho. Hello, Roger. Welcome. Probably, okay, I'm not hungry myself. I'm probably making other people hungry, so I'm sorry about that. What are some other options we have here? Mexican. Okay, I'm not hungry at the moment. So, none of these sound appetizing to me. I'm good. I'm good, Roger. How are you? I love Greek food so much. You know what? I'm thinking about Greek food. Last week we had Pakistani and... Oh my god, you guys. They got... They got... They gave us mango lassies. Can you believe it? Reminded me to put my dinner in? Good. Tanzanite, since you play Destiny... Have you been playing have you been playing the new season? Because I've been having the time of my life. I really enjoy this season. I think I think it's more fun, honestly, than the last season. As, even though the last season was like more aesthetically my shit. Um I definitely enjoy the activities in this season a lot more. Just had a deep dish pizza. You're okay? Well, okay is good. Okay is good. I'm not a fan personally of deep dish pizza, but I'm happy for, for people who enjoy it. Who have it and enjoy it. I mean, every time I've had deep dish pizza, it's been it's been tasty. But also it's like propor like disproportionate pers like I personally think. Like I have had deep dish pizza that's been like mostly sauce and I like that because I really like sauce and uh, you got to use a fork but but oh I love sauce delicious but then like the true way to have deep dish Chicago deep dish pizza is uh like two inches of cheese and I don't enjoy that I like cheese don't get me wrong I do not enjoy two inches of melted cheese that I can suffocate on. That's my personal preference, though. 
thick crust, thick crust pizza, delicious. And deep dish pizza, like I've said, is, is tasty. I just, it's not. The proportions, the proportions. You gotta fix them. You gotta fix them, Chicago. What are you doing wrong? Have you guys heard of, uh, would I be attacked to say I got it from Little Caesars? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I've never had their deep dish pizza, so I don't know, like, how their their deal is. I personally think uh, all the hate on Little Caesars pizza is unwarranted. Uh, because I feel like the only reason I've ever heard people hate on Little Caesars pizza is because it's cheap. Um, most people who say, Ugh, why would you get Little Caesars pizza? Are, are, like, have never had it. They just assume it's bad because it's $5 pizza. It is okay. It's fine. It's an entire pizza. My family lived off that shit because, like, when you, you don't have the money or time to make food, it is so awesome to be able to go to Little Caesars and say, Hey, I need a way to feed my family for five dollars and they have it and it's awesome for that price it is awesome so no little caesars is good little caesars is good i think people are just mean yeah it's not high quality but it's a pizza right for five dollars it's good their breadsticks are- their crazy bread's pretty good. You know what? I'd take that over Olive Garden breadsticks. Oh man. Yeah, you know, deep dish pizza is incredibly intimidating to a lactose intolerant person. Dude, crazy bread is the shit. It's crazy! The Joker- to the Joker, it's just normal bread. Yeah, I'm making this more angular. More personality, baby. Maybe. No. Oh yeah. No, I I, I do think like 80% of the people who trash talk um Little Caesars only do it because it's cheap pizza. It's a classism thing. Either that, or it's like pizza elitism, which has always, like, been really fucking stupid. <laughs> like, Italian-Americans who think the only good pizza is, like, from the Italian place across the street from them in New York. And it's like... Nah. Most pizza is good. The only bad pizza I've ever had has been frozen pizza. And they're still pretty good frozen pizzas. Hello, Little Caesars. Could I have some normal bread? Hello, Elliot. Oh my god. Hey, Elliot, I need you to pay attention right now, real quick, real quick, real quick. I'm gonna take a sip of water. I need you to pay attention to me drinking water. Are you ready? Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? Okay, good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I was reminded because of the Spamton song. Yay!
Okay. Yeah, what was the only bad restaurant pizza you had? You know what? Come to think of it, I think I have had bad restaurant pizza. At, at like, Disney. Like, Disney would have, like, kids' menus at their, like, fancy restaurants. So they would have, um, they would have pizza, like, little personal pizzas kind of, like, on tier with, like, school lunch pizzas. They were bad. I, I doubt they're as, like, as bad as they used to be. Oh god, I forget the name of the pizza place in Animal Kingdom, but I think it was from there that I specifically got pizza that I was like, oh wow, this is really mid. A pizza I got for free at a company event that was the thickest thickness of a manila folder. And I'm pretty sure, in fact, a dressed up Totina's party pizza. No. No way. Cass, hello, welcome in. No. Oh. Dude, I even think, like, those Totinas, like, party pizzas are, like, okay. They're not good. They're not, like, good on pizza standards by any means, but... But, if you need, like, quick food, and you, you want, like, a, a little party pizza snack, two bad kinds of pizza. School lunch, that wasn't quite school lunch, and then another pizza from a legitimate restaurant that was trying to be a bougie was just not good. Oh. Oh. No, nah, school lunch has, uh, school lunch had, like, the shittiest pizza. It was, like, listen, it was, like, rectangle. Thought I hated pizza for so long because it made me feel horribly ill. I didn't realize I couldn't eat cheese till I was, like, 21. I wonder, Thursday, if you could eat, like, super aged cheese. I wonder if that would, like if your lactose intolerance would just be like, nah, this is fine. Because the lactose in it is is is, is old. I, I have no scientific explanation for what I'm trying to say. Sketch blob, hello. Soggy rectangle with dough and not solid. Yeah! Ooh. Didn't become lactose intolerant until my early 20s. Yeah, I, I've heard of a lot of stories of people, like, not becoming lactose intolerant until they're older. Most mammals are lactose intolerant, the more you know. I think uh, most humans, in fact, are lactose intolerant, like across globally, globally, probably, maybe not most, maybe, maybe a good bit of, <laughs> hold on, hold on. I know, I know there's a lot of people who are lactose intolerant in the world. There are like whole countries that are mostly lactose intolerant. Like as far as I know, Japan is mostly lactose intolerant. I think old cheese might, like, be worse for the tummy, tummy but I'm not a tumologist. Whoa! Okay, hold on. Let's listen. I keep getting the prompt to share this LOL. <laughs> Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Oh, that's great. Thank you, Cass, for the five months. Uh, just a reminder to everybody, it is September. So you can get thirty per up to thirty percent off with uh with subs this month. I believe if you uh subscribe for six months, like you can you can subscribe for six months in advance. Um, you can get thirty percent off of that. So, so, so. Also, if you know of any people that aren't usually in the chat or. Uh, anybody, anybody you think would enjoy my content and you want to go give them a gift sub, uh, that is very much appreciated. Any little bit helps, uh, especially this month because I'm taking off commissions this month. 
uh, which is usually my main source of income. So it really, truly helps um, because I'm kind of, I'm kind of just running off of savings right now, and also my uh, Twitch money that I get. So any, any donations, any, any subs, they all help. Uh, they help me eat. They help me pay bills. Um, so it is very much appreciated, especially this month, because I'm doing all my focus on game dev. Also, if you still have not played uh, Mixed Feelings, it is pay what you want, so you can play it for free if you so choose, and maybe come back later and donate if you so would like to. If, if you would like to. What's up guys? Remember to smash that subscribe button. Remember to gift that sub to your best friend. You know what? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. But it is it is part it is part of that streamer life. It's part of that streamer life. Especially when it's part of my income, you know. I try to be more chill so I'm not obnoxious like Matt Pat levels of Hey everybody Hello internet, welcome to Spoon Stream. Today we'll be talking about Undertale. Anyway. I can't give subs because my wallet was stolen. I have no card to use at the moment. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's awful. No, please, please take care of yourself first. Do not worry about me. Worry about yourself first. Worry about yourself. I will not guilt trip anybody into subbing to me. Only do it if you're comfortable and you're safe. And you would like to support me, of course. Nobody's obligated. You don't need to. It just helps and I appreciate it. I'm running errands later for the first time in three months. Oh my god. I'm so happy for you. Get some good, good food. Can't give subs because I got into a scam and had to close my account after some unfortunate events. Ah! Ah! I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, you guys don't have to give me, like, reasons you can't do it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to be like, oh, this is why I can't do it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to give any reason. You don't have to, like, I'm not gonna approach you and be like, excuse me, why haven't you subbed to me yet? I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hype it up just a little bit. I'm not gonna guilt trip anybody into into subbing to me. It's just one of those things where it's like, if you want to, if you can, if you're able, go for it. Sucks getting that stuff replaced. Need a new driver's license too. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I I had a I had a roommate forever ago. Um who got mugged twice and had um, her, um, her wallet and purse stolen twice. And dude, it is such a pain to like get your driver's license, get your debit card, all of your like information and stuff, all of the ID cards and stuff. That in particular is like the hardest thing to deal with when it comes to like um, getting your getting your stuff stolen. It sucks. Because, like, I mean, if you have a car and you need to get your driver's license and you maybe you had your insurance card in your wallet and that was the only place you had it, you also have to get a new insurance card, like a car insurance card, and that's a pain in the ass. And um, so you have to drive to the DMV. One of, I think one of the things... One of the things that ended up e being an issue, I vaguely remember, for this uh, roommate is when she like went to the DMV to get a new driver's license, because it's it's already a pain because you don't have a driver's license to replace, right? Um, so there you need some sort of like temp license thing that you get from like the cops. I, I don't know, and I think she got pulled over. Like, on the way to the DMV, just randomly, just randomly. Also, I'm gonna, 
gonna switch. I'm gonna switch tasks real quick. Background for my game. Also, people, I'm sorry, my hand's going crazy. It's going crazy right now. It's going, going crazy. Okay. So I'm going to save this. I mean, it's a progress. I think it's pretty much going to look the same. I might try a few little things. Hollow Knight. Yeah, I still haven't played it. I'm sorry. Is the music quiet? Is it too quiet? I kind of, I want it quiet so I can talk over it, but I also, I want it to be audible. Sometimes I ask that and people are like, there's music playing? And I'm like, oh shit. If I'm ever speaking and you can't hear the music at all to the point where it's like, there's no, you think there's no music, uh, please let me know. Because <laughs> sometimes I don't realize the audio levels. I won't get mad. I won't get mad. Hang on. Cameo. There we go. Where I live to get mugged twice? Orlando, Florida. Uh, near Universal Studios. I won't say exactly where. I mean, nobody I know lives there anymore. Um, but if I told you the area, you would only know about the area. Uh, if you lived in Central Florida. Excuse me, as a member of the cult, why have you not submitted your monthly tithes? Dude, dude, Thursday, you've given me an idea. I need to, I need to just, I need to just start calling subs monthly tithes. That kind of makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Listen, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, okay, I hate to tie things into Final Fantasy VII, but Final Fantasy VII is my favorite game ever. And uh, the most realistic shit that I never really put together when I was way younger um, in Final Fantasy VII, which I always thought was crazy, is the fact that Golden Saucer, the, like the big theme park place in the game where it, you have to be super rich to get in and it's like super extravagant and beautiful and big playground for adults and stuff is right next to the most rundown poverty stricken poverty stricken area in the game that that is the most real shit because that is how it is in Orlando Florida um because you got Disney, you got Universal, you got SeaWorld all around in the same place, and Busch Gardens, uh, which is a little bit further. You have all of these, you have all of these places all in the same area. Everybody going to these theme parks are loaded. They're super rich. They are super rich. So there are all of these areas which are um, targeted toward these super rich, wealthy people. Um, one of these places is called the Millennia Mall. Um, all of the shops in there are super, like, expensive brand, um, places. There's a freaking, like, small, like, there's like a band that comes out and plays in the middle of the mall, but it, they, it's like a fancy rich people band. It's not just like, it's not just like a little tiny jazz band or whatever. They, they have, like, a viola and shit. It's, like, it's fancy shit. It is crazy fancy. So, here's the thing. You drive from the main street where you turn onto uh, the road that takes you to Universal and Islands of Adventure. And then you go off that street and you drive past uh, the Millennia Mall. Right after you get past the Mill Millennia Mall, bam, you are in the impoverished area. That is where all the poor people live. That is where, um, that, that's just where all the poor people live. And usually, generally, all the poor people who live there work at Universal. <laughs> because they don't pay shit. 
They don't pay shit. They don't pay shit at the theme parks. The starting pay when I lived there was like seven dollars. People be like, "Wow, this be great to work at Disney." Anyway, I had to I had to go on my rant. It it was honestly very like unnerving. Um, how like you you're in like fancy rich people land and then bam, nope. Not anymore. It's like the slums here. It's like the slums. That's where I lived for like a year. <laughs> uh, I didn't mention that like my my roommate. Not only did she get mugged twice, she got mugged twice in the same spot. Can you guess where that place was? Right outside our door. Woohoo! Yippee! <laughs> Orlando, uh, is, uh, there are parts of Orlando that are nice, there are parts of Orlando that aren't. It's just, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. It's pretty scary. Inherent fancy level of violas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now let's actually work on some backgrounds. Let's go. Okay. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. I can also, like, talk. My hand keeps disappearing. That's an issue. Um, I can also talk about backgrounds. If you guys have any, like, questions about backgrounds and how to make a background and stuff, I can tell you right now. Um, I can tell you right now. One big thing about my backgrounds I do, especially um, characters like rooms and, like, homes and stuff is I make it in the sims look at this this is Ezra's room I made it in the sims <laughs> and then I just drew over it I'm just drawing over it and I'm probably going to add a little bit more stuff um simply do not exit or enter your house problem solved <laughs> you know I wish that was possible like you said, most who go to the park are loaded with money for souvenirs and such, to which the muggers know that. Oh yeah! Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing, is like, when you have like a, a place, like a, a tourism heavy place, um, where a lot of rich people go, uh, the people nearby in like the impoverished areas are going to target those rich people. That is just how that works. That's how that works out. Um, Tips for getting started as an artist by The Sims. You know what? I got The Sims 4 for free. Because uh, it was on Origins for free at one point. Um, and I was able to get it. And there's always a, there, there's very often a lot of s sales for The Sims. And there's also a lot of like room builders you can use. I believe Ikea even has a room builder thing. So there's a lot of different things. You can also make uh, places in Minecraft, which is really helpful because like, you know, everything's like cubes and you can kind of form your own sort of stuff. Ugh. Anyway. Um, clearly I did not make a cave. Clearly I did not make a cave in The Sims. I, I kind of did that background on my own. It's like layers. I think I looked up like a water cave thing. Um, this is Zale's room. I always thought it would be cool to have like a little pool that leads out into a lake. And it makes sense because, you know, Zale is a water creature and needs to, needs to go in the water, probably. And uh, so Zale can just, you know, read a book and then be like, I'm going for a swim. Brew! You know? So. What do you guys think about this background? Do you think it's lacking? Or is that just me? Zale is a pretty minimalist person. So I think he would just kind of... He wouldn't have... He would have pretty minimalist, like, minimal, like, decorations and stuff. He's more into keeping things, like, simple and nice and... Like, he has this, uh... He has this uh, bookshelf over here, you know, um, but it's it's really just for books. And I imagine he got this plant from Dandy, and that's like he's not a very materialistic person. 
He's like, I need things for, like, functionality, you know? He needs things that, that function. <laughs> he needs a tissue box on his coffee table. This is the type of person he is. I love Zale. Oh. I, do, I love Zale a lot. So the way I did this, the way I do a lot of backgrounds is I, is I kind of, I start with like the floor and the, the walls and stuff, which in this case are kind of funky. Uh, so as you can see, there's like color blocking for that. It's very simple, not super precise. Um, I did do some line art for like the stones on the ground, kind of like a cobblestone sort of deal and um, some like cracks and stuff in the rocks around here. I might uh, edit this a little bit more because this is looking a little funky over here. Um, and so I also did the water uh, gradient sort of deal, lighter inside the home and it gets darker as it goes out because it's going out into the lake. Would Zale have any notebooks or sheet music or is that all in the bookshelf? You know, you make a fair point. I could I could I could put something over here probably. Imagine this. He invites you in his home and offers you to swim in the water. You go in and boom, you're in the pool rooms. <gasps> I love the pool rooms. But the pool rooms like people describe like li liminal spaces. They're always like, "Oh, it's so scary. It's so scary." Pool rooms are the most relaxing thing to me. I don't know what it is about the pool rooms. I love those pieces. They're so good. Um, so I did this, and I also did a reflection right there. What are some other layers we have here? We have... Then we have everything, like, in the room. But Cass, I like your suggestion. Um, I'm gonna look up sheet music... ...above keyboard. Sheet music, sheet music, where are you? Keyboard with sheet music holder, come on. With sheet music holder. Oh, that's cute. Okay, I like this. Okay, I'm gonna use this. Uh, chat, behave. Behave. I'm gonna not look at you for a second, but this won't take long at all. Zale is so minimalist that I... You know what? I don't think Zale would have... You know what? I'm, go I'm still gonna put a holder. I kind of want to put a laptop or something. I don't know. Zale strikes me as the person who doesn't really know how to read uh, sheet music. I kind of, I kind of want to just put like a laptop or like a tablet or something. Oh, that's what I can do. Okay, so I can put a sheet music holder. Right? And, uh, I'm gonna look up. Zale is absolutely a, uh, an Apple user. And then we can have a tablet, like, sitting here. What a nerd. I keep thinking of, of my, my joke I made where Zale likes Bionicle. I keep thinking about putting a Bionicle somewhere as just an homage to that, because I think it'd be funny. Okay, I don't... Here, I'm at- I'm looking at the chat. No, no, don't- don't yell or scream and say curse! Don't do it! Why are people yelling outside? Bionicle shaped shadow. Uh oh. Uh oh. Can't 
Can't have any of that. Okay. What color is the iPad? I think that's an obvious answer. Zale not knowing how to read sheet music. You know what? Most uh, most musicians I've met do not know how to read sheet music. Or, like, don't really do it. Like, they may have, like, minimal knowledge, but... Most of the time, they're just like... Yeah, nah. I don't need sheet music. I can just play stuff. Like, I've known a lot of musicians who just play stuff by ear. Which is, you know, like, I can play stuff by ear, not, like, super well. Like, I can do, like, a key at a time. If I can figure out the scale of something, I can, I can go, okay, I know where everything is. And then, like, play a song that I know, um, key by key. And if I, if I listen to a song over and over, I can play, like, both hands. If I'm really, like, if, if I just listen to it over and over, I can be like, okay, th so this, this hand would be here, this hand would be here, this would be doing this. I can't do that with chords so much. Um, but if I can hear a melody from one hand and then the other hand, I can, I can figure it out. I think I did that with the Elfin Lead theme. I'm sorry. When I was a kid, I really liked Elfin Lead for some reason. Which is not a show- Well, I was like 15. I, d I still don't think I should have been watching it. If you don't know what Elfin Lead is, it's also called Elf- Like, a lot of people call it Elfin Lied. It's, uh, uh... It's really violent. Even by my standards, it's pretty- It's pretty violent. Like, not in a- In a, like, hell yeah, gore, woohoo! violent way um oh the opening the opening like first um like the first um episode has a very violent opening that's pretty fun honestly honestly however there are parts of the show that are uh, genuinely hard to watch i remember when i watched it in 15 minute segments uh on youtube back in the day Back in the day when that was a th how everybody watched anime. Um, oh boy. There was one episode that came with a warning before it, like, Hey, warning. There's, a uh, animal violence. Violence against animals in this episode, so if you have trouble watching that, just be aware. And I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. And I sure was like, uh-oh, <laughs> when it was happening. Elfin lead is a trip. It's, uh, it's, it's too much. It's too much. Bionicle to put in. Baraki is a, a, like a creepy underwater set. <gasps> I think I remember Baraki. My friends taught herself how to play the new Super Mario Bros. Castle theme by ear. No sheet music, just kept listening and was like, yeah, so this is what the whole thing sounds like. You know what? What was I saying about... I, I was starting to say something and then I forgot. Okay. I'm gonna look up a Baraki. See, the thing- oh, this one looks like a mantis. Oh. The thing that is, like, keeping me from drawing a bionicle somewhere is the fact that they are so goddamn complicated. Here, let me- let me just- <laughs> Hello, friend. Learning stuff by ear is such a nightmare for me. You see, that's the thing with like most people. Is is the thing. That's the thing with most people. Is uh and that's the thing that's strange to me because it's like to me that like makes sense to be able to hear a scale and be like, okay, I know where each note is. Oh, uh, speaking of playing things by ear. This is uh, one of the first songs I learned how to play by ear on the recorder. So that brings back memories. Um, 
when people can look at notes on a on sheet music that is it and like just play it that is what impresses me because being able to like even if you know how to read sheet music like being able to look at notes and figure out what like keys are associated with them is like terrifying to me is that about how big that would be maybe that's a little small maybe i should maybe that's how big Maybe that's how big. No. Maybe about there. Okay. When when Zale is not playing... No, this is... Okay, we're adding to the Zale lore. We're adding to the Zale lore. When... Whenever Zale goes to play the keyboard, he forgets this, that this Baraki is here. And it falls over and he just goes, No! Every single time. And then he's like, I'll pick it up later. And then he puts it back when he's done. And that's his little ritual he does. If it's a simple melody with only one note at a time, sure. But everything all layered on itself, incomprehensible. See, this is how, this is how you make characters real and believable. You give them, like, very, like, human qualities like this Lego's going to play my game the Lego corporation That's about the right size thank you <laughs> Stole us thank you for following Welcome in welcome in we're drawing Baraki well tracing Oh my god that's kind of scary um <laughs> Kind of scary. You know what? I'm gonna make a simplified Baraki. It's fine. Zale is doing so good. I love him. You know, I love him too. I love him so much. I'm excited. Tomorrow we're gonna be doing Ezra sprites. And we're gonna figure out a new outfit for her. Because I cannot decide on a new outfit for her. Um, what do you guys think? A fashionista like like Ezra would wear like give me outfit pieces like ideas somebody I think a while back said she would look cute in a crop top and I agree I think I want to give her a crop top with like stripes I think it'd be really cute crop top but what else should she wear what looks good with a crop top like High-waisted jeans? I don't know. I feel like that defeats the purpose of a crop top because it's to show your belly and if you're wearing like high high-waisted jeans then your belly is gone and then all you see is like the, up like a, a little bit. No. Release the belly. Release it. Jeans so high waisted, it's no longer a crop top. It defeats the purpose. It's gone. Okay. No longer. Oh, you have like a gun, a crossbow thing. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Oh, it looks so bad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I love making art. I love deciding. You know what? You know what this needs? You know what this game needs? Fucking Baraki. That's what this game needs. That's exactly what this game needs. It needs a Baraki.
That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> Come on in, Baraki. I'm gonna just do a little bit. No, a little bit. There we go. Give you some red eyes. This will this will be this will be like this will be part of like the east Easter eggs in this game. If you look real close, Zale has a Baraki. Zale has a friend and boy. I'm doing it like this. We're just leaving it like this. Hold on. This is close enough, I think. I think I think this is good enough. Yeah. I think I think we've made it. I think I think we've won. No one will notice. It is so small. It is so small. It glows in the dark, just so you know. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, yeah, no, that's Zale's light. Night light. Creepy fish skull dude glowing softly, lulling me to sleep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is so small. Nobody's ever gonna notice it. This is a secret between you and me, chat. Skater, skater shirt is also an option. Oh my god. Very specific outfit I have that comes to mind when I think of crop tops. Ooh. Oh my god. Okay, it's time to drink. It's time to drink. Mm. Oh my my hand my hand go away Okay All right Oh Let's see Okay so we added that fun little easter egg we added a little we added a little iPad um, nothing's gonna be on the TV. I don't think Zale would be the type of person to leave his TV on. So, that's- we're good in that department. Hmm. First, I may clean up the rocks a little bit. Clean up- clean up some rock. But, ooh. Got a lot of stuff. And then we can, uh, add some shading. To some things. It's already like shading in the floor and stuff. Maybe add a little bit of detail to the rugs. Oh, excuse me. But we got something. Zale doesn't even have cable. Who has cable anymore? Truly, the only people I know who have any sort of like cable are like 70 years old. The only places that pl pay for cable are like, the only people that pay for cable are like HR departments in like retail stores because they need cable TV in the break room for like people to watch. No, nobody has, nobody has cable anymore because it's more convenient to just have a bunch of streaming services. It's about the same price as you would pay for cable to have like, a Disney Plus and Hulu and ESPN pack, you know? And that's everything, like, on demand, and it's awesome. But also, like, nobody nobody wants to pay ever for all those streaming services. It's, like, a pain in the ass. We're in the future. Oh, God, I keep bu bumping into my microphone. I'm so sorry. You hear? You probably hear some boom boom. Boom boom boom. My bad. All right, let's let's uh, clean up some rocks. Probably over here. 
Yeah. Uh, there's not too much cleaning up work to do. It's just mostly here. Just this kind of bothers me. Yeah. I don't watch TV anymore. I just come on Twitch. Exactly. Like, entertainment has, like, evolved into, like, a comp kind of, not a completely different animal, but a pretty... It, it has evolved quite a bit in the past few years. Like, streaming especially is, like, such an interesting... Like, streaming, like, Twitch streaming specifically is, like, such an interesting, like, concept. And there's so many weird things that you could do that is made more interesting by, one, being live, and also, two, having an audience um, that can interact with the streamer. Things like... Okay, probably one of the most brilliant... Um, wildest shit I've ever seen done on a Twitch stream is uh, Jerma's dollhouse. Um, that... I don't even watch Jerma. Jerma seems like a cool guy. Um, but holy shit. Like, that was insane. That was like, I think Jerma won streaming. Listen, all I'm saying is that TV doesn't let me join a cult. Never mind, just remember televangelism exists. Oh god, yeah, no. No, that shit is definitely a cult. That is some cult shit, for sure. Oh no, there's a lot of cult shit on like, uh... There's, <laughs> there's a lot of cult shit on television. Yeah, no, you can join my fantasy cult. It's more fun. Oh god, what was I saying? But nah, the whole like dollhouse stream, if you're unfamiliar, the, the, the short of it is uh, basically Jerma rented out like a studio and they had a team like build a life-size dollhouse. So like the, the side of the um, Oh, it's a Mumbai check. Oh, it's a Mumbai check. Uh oh. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta find myself in my list of things. There it is. There it is. Oh, we haven't had the duck here in a while, have we? Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, let me see. Mumbai, are you in here? No, she's not. I kicked her out. I forgot. Hold on. Hold on, I'll be back. Oh god! I knew this would happen. Hold on. I also have my tail. I forgot about that. Alright, cool. She's here. She's here. Hey, Moonpai, you want some food? You want a treat? You want a treat? I'm giving her treats. Here you go. Probably can't hear her as well because this microphone is better, but you know. She has soft little muse. Soft. Soft. Yeah. Yeah, she's good. She's good. I'm petting her. Giving her a pet. Okay, well now she's in here. Yeah. Are you leaving? Okay, I 
have cracked the door open for her. She's a real life celebrity. She's a real life celebrity. My friends got to meet Moon Pie, and she loved them. She loved them. Moon Pie's like, she's like shy at first, but then as soon as she like gets to know you, in like the first like couple seconds of knowing you, she's like, okay, I love you now. Yep. The door's cracked open. You can leave. You can leave. Get out of here. Get out of here. Stop scratching. If you want to get out, leave. I've like babysat or cat sat for a few people's cats. Uh, one time, uh, somebody left their cat with me for like a day. Did not see that cat the entire time they were with me. That cat hid the entire time. I'm like, damn. I'm so used to Moon Pie, who's immediately like, I love you. And I'm like, Moon Pie, why are you like this? Granted, she's not always like that. Like, she can be a little shy at first, but sometimes, like, you will, she will try to meet somebody and she immediately decides, I fucking hate you, and then hides. So, you know. Can't remember if I was talking about anything before that Moon Pie check, but it's okay. We're here to, to work. Yeah, Moon Pie only like really hides when one, she decides this person is evil and she never wants to see them. Um, and that has happened once. That has happened once. At least one time. You know what? I'm trying to think. I feel like it's happened more. Oh, German Dollhouse stream. Okay, cool. So cut out the side, or not cut out the side of the building, but built a building so that you could see into it like a dollhouse, you know? Like a huge, life-size dollhouse. And um, there was Twitch integration um, where... It, to, it, it was basically like the Twitch chatters were playing a game of The Sims and they could vote on the next item that would be put into the house and where it would be put. And, um, it's just shit like that. Like, crazy shit like that. And they even decided on, like, what Germa would wear. And it was, it was nuts. And, like, what events would take place and what would happen next it was it was crazy it was like a cult of the lamb stream but real life no no nah, if even if you're like if you're not familiar with germa and i personally am not really that familiar i heard about the dollhouse stream and i was like um what and i watched bits and pieces and i was like this man has won he has won streaming he truly has the the crazy thing about germa to me is like Every instance of me, like, learning... Hey! Stop it! Stop! I'm gonna get you! Stop! The door is open! You're so dumb! Sorry, she is scratching at the ground, even though the door is literally open. She does that when she wants out. Anyway, um... The way that Germa's, like, fandom... Following, whatever you want to call them... The way that they talk about Germa, they make him sound insane. And you know, given given like that wild premise for a stream, given that like high concept idea, um like that does sound insane. That does make Germa sound incredibly unhinged. However, most Germa streams that I have seen or like uh, tuned into, Germa just seems like the most normal guy ever. To be quite honest, Germa seems like really down to earth and like he just has really good stream ideas. And I think part of what makes him feel unhinged is that he's a normal guy going through crazy shit 
and he just doesn't react the way that you would expect him to. Oh, no. Get out of here. Don't... Oh, I didn't ban you. Oh, hold on. What was their name? Oh, they're gone anyway. Never mind. <clears throat> hey, Corgi. What's up? Very mild cat allergy, but it's just a minor inconvenience to myself, and I will simply suffer to give a cat a little kiss. Incredible. There is a lot of untapped potential for, like, high-concept entertainment stuff in streaming. Um, I think, like, just, like, the worst part about streaming is that, like, technical difficulties are so easy to come by because of, like, internet connection and, like... You gotta have pretty, um, gotta have pretty good equipment, especially with, like, modern games, um, to be able to stream stuff at a high quality. And, like, you guys have seen, even stuff like Cult of the Lamb can be really choppy for me, despite having a computer with, a uh, pretty, really good RAM. I have 32 gigs of RAM, but it might not even, it might not be the RAM, that's the problem. It's- it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell what exactly the fucking problem is with, like, streaming stuff. There's so many things. Even, like, big-name streamers like Vinny Vine Sauce, um, have, like, te technical difficulties, like, constantly. Oh, and that's another thing. That's a- the- another thing. About, like, the crazy, like, phenomenon of, like, how sh how streaming is kind of like changing like entertainment standards vtubing vtubing is, is such an interesting concept i'm saying as like basically a vtuber at this point but it's such an interesting concept because it's kind of like i mean it's 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 not an entirely new concept because if you think of like um, the idol scene in like Japan it's similar it's similar and it's treated kind of with the same mentality which kind of sucks honestly um, which if you're unfamiliar with like the idol scene in Japan it's uh, disturbing because it's basically, it's it's not so much about like, here are these cute girls who sing music. It's not so much about the music aspect. It's about the uh, sex appeal of uh, of these these idols and the availability. Like the by by availability, what I mean to say is um, the fans that they cater to specifically want to fantasize about being with these with these women sometimes sometimes men it's most it's mostly like young women very much removing their personhood exactly and i feel like um a lot of the vtubing scene is sort of in that same vein be like or at least audiences of really big vtubers are kind of like in that same like entitlement sort of um mentality where there will be people uh that get really pissed if a vtuber starts talking about uh having a boyfriend or girlfriend or partner in general um uh, because it's like oh, well the she was supposed to be my girlfriend and it's uh really gross um but that's how a lot of like audience that's, a, that's how a lot of audiences are, like, treating the VTubing scene. Is, uh, they see an anime waifu, and then that, that's their anime waifu. And, uh, they throw money and they expect, um, they expect compensation for that money. It's like, okay, I own you now. And it's like, ooh, it's so gross. But my parasocial relationship, yeah. They're, they're... Unfortunately, like that that's that's one of the big downsides of like Twitch streaming is there has to be a bit there has to be at least okay. I say I say this, but 
that's not really the definition of parasocial relationships. But there has to be a little, a little amount of parasocialness, unfortunately. Like that is that is how it, how it be. It do be like that. There has to be a little amount. However, however, I think people are using parasocial relationships a little bit wrong. People are using parasocial relationships to mean I am a fan of this uh, content creator and me interacting with them is parasocial. Not quite. That's not quite what parasocial means. Um, especially for smaller streamers. Um who don't have like thousands of people or hundreds of people even in their in their chat. I don't I wouldn't consider that parasocial. What parasocial means is somebody uh having a one-sided obsession with a celebrity or or a content creator who doesn't know they exist. That is more so what parasocial means. Or doesn't really have any connection to them. It doesn't doesn't necessarily have to mean that they don't know they exist. But I just see like parasocial is one of the the buzzwords that I keep seeing being thrown around because people tend to like lately be really afraid to interact with content creators that they look up to because they're like, I don't want it to be parasocial. I don't want to be parasocial. And it's like no. Um, Actually, content creators kind of rely, they kind of rely on that interaction, on that like feedback. Um, so it is okay to reply it like to their tweets. It is okay to comment on their content. It is okay to interact with them. It is fine. That is not parasocial. You are okay to chat with content creators. Hello, soul. I'm talking about how people are kind of skewing paraso the, the term parasocial. <laughs> parasocial is o like, like it's only bad. Uh, <laughs> me having a parasocial relationship with the Ape Escape soundtrack. That is more accurate. That is more accurate to the definition of parasocial because the Ape Escape soundtrack doesn't know you exist, but you sure know it exists and you're obsessed with it. Oh man, they read my message out loud. We're getting married. Yeah, that's more so a parasocial relationship. You know what? You know what? You know what actually feels quote unquote parasocial, but I, by definition probably isn't quite. It's when I read somebody's message out loud in my chat and they go, Oh my God, Spooty read my message. Oh my God. And then I go, bruh, bruh. Bro, of course I read your message. There are ten people in my chat. Why wouldn't I read your message? It- That's always been a weird thing for me personally, is like... Is like... Generally in my streams... We have like 10 to 20, sometimes like 30 people in here. Not, not a huge crowd, I like my smaller streams, they're nice. And I like chilling with my, the, the usual peeps. Sometimes new folks. It's great. And then sometimes people will show up who are just so starry-eyed for some reason and act like I have like 8 million followers. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> oh no, I, it's been a long time since that's happened. But I have, I have at least seen it on Twitter. Um, this is- th okay. I'm gonna be real with y'all. It is a bannable offense if somebody literally in response to me acknowledging them says, Senpai noticed me! I will ban you. That is a bannable offense. Do not say that shit. Don't say- don't be like, Oh my god! Oh, Sugoi Senpai noticed me! I will- I will ban you. Get out. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna keep drawing. Okay. Nobody would do that unless it was a joke. But I 
It makes me sick to my stomach. I'm dead serious. It makes me so sick to my stomach when people respond to me interacting with them with senpai notice me. I want, I, I want to destroy. I want to set things on fire. Like, here's the thing. Here's the thing about, like, interacting with, like, content creators. There, it, there, it is a balance. There is... <laughs> Senpai, throw me into the dark void or you will lose 45 faith. No. <laughs> it's exciting when someone you think is cool and doesn't interact with you all the time notices you and proves of something you said, but, like, don't be a freak. Yeah, be chill. There's, like, a balance. There's a balance of, like, interacting with people that you think are cool. There's a balance. Like, just treat them like people, but also, also, okay. Also, don't be, like, playfully rude with them off the bat. Because I have had, like, kids show up in my chat, and the first thing out of their goddamn mouth is, like, something playfully rude, and I'm like... Hello? Like a while- this is a while back. This is a throwback because I was- like, this is- this is topical because I was working on a background. Um, somebody showed up, first time chatter, and was like, wow, imagine being good at backgrounds, cringe. And I was like... Anyway, um... <clears throat> Vinny has read my chats when I've been in his streams, but I only ever said dumb shit and- and no, it's just like a normal thing. I don't fucking know. <laughs> if Vinny read something in my chat, I'd be so happy, but I wouldn't be like, OH MY GOD! Vinny Vine Sauce! Vinny Vine Sauce read my- my comment! Wow! I love Vinny. Vinny's awesome. We're listening to spooky- spooky shit right now, it's good. Is it bad if I laughed at- imagine being good at backgrounds, cringe. I mean, it was a funny comment, but it was also, like, playfully rude right off the bat. Like, imagine in, imagine showing up and, like, sarcastically, like, making fun of somebody. Like, come on. That's amore. God. Honestly, it it's like okay, we can we can talk about this because this is relevant. It's like a a little it's not a pet peeve. It's like what is the word for it? It bothers me. It just bothers me that one of the most prevalent things in like the art community is um Ugh. I don't want to draw the background. Ugh, I hate drawing backgrounds. Ugh, I should draw a background so I can be a good artist. Like, hating drawing backgrounds is such a common thing in the art community, and I get it. Backgrounds are hard. If you just want to draw, if you just want to draw a character in a cool pose, just do that. Drawing a background in your piece does not make you a better artist. It doesn't. Especially if you are, like, primarily a character artist. Just draw the character. You don't have to draw the background, especially if that's not your goal, if that's not your end goal. If your goal is to draw a character doing the peace sign, fucking do it. You don't need a shoehorned in background. I've talked about this quite recently, but I need to talk about it again. I'm very passionate about this. He was replaying a finished version of a weird old indie game he played like 10 years ago and I was like, I have thought about this game every day since you played it and he was like, chat member, I don't think you're okay. I do appreciate and recognize uh, how Vinny, having such a big audience and having like the potential to like, there's definitely a lot of people in a parasocial relationship with Vinny Vine Sauce, for sure. I do appreciate how when he reads out people's messages, he does not acknowledge their screen name. He just calls them chat member. And that is really smart. 
That is really smart. Having such a big audience, that is incredibly smart. That is big brain. Incredibly big brain. Like, great job, Mr. Sauce. I'm proud of you. He refers to chat as an entity, which is... There you go. That's that's what it is. When it gets that big, when it amasses... When you amass that many followers, you love the background? Hey, I'm glad you're here. Hang on. I started something. I started something. I'm redrawing your thing. It's good. It's just gonna get a little bit of an update. Because it's almost your sixth patriversary. So happy six years, god damn it. That's so long. Anyway, I needed to show you that. I'm glad you enjoy this background. It's almost done. I just need some... Some... Some stuff. That is so long. You've been the longest patron. The first and the longest. Hold on. How long have I been streaming? Uh... Like two and a half hours. Okay. I'm gonna drink some water. Oh. I remember watching Vinny when he was first streaming like 12 years ago, and I was one of the only people in his chat. Oh my god, how many people did he have in his chat back then? Oh. Which. Okay, hang on. I'm trying to remember what stickers you got. Did you get the Sly Cooper ones? I can't remember. I think you got the Sly Cooper ones. Enjoy enjoy the Cooper game. Enjoy the Cooper boys. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Enjoy the Cooper boys. I can't remember if you if you are familiar with Sly Cooper at all. I'm hoping we can play Sly 2 in November. The thing about Sly 2 is it's fucking long. Only a hundred people. That's crazy to think about. Now he has like 3,000 people in the chat. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I mostly watch uh, Vinny on VODs instead of uh, in the chat. Because I get distracted by the chat and his chat is horrendous, honestly. Because at the drop of a hat, they're like, oh, I'm going to talk about sex. I'm going to talk about sex and penis. And it's like, God, chill out. Used to be one of the only people in Spoonie's old live streams for like 10 years ago, right? Yeah, that's back when I would stream on like, um, fucking livestream.com. Probably. I don't even remember the kind of stuff I streamed back then. There's like a few really old clips on here where I was using face cam. Don't look them up. Don't look them up. Anyway. Let's see if I can finish this. I say don't look them up, but I mean... If anybody was that desperate to see what I look like or looked like back in the day... I mean, sure. <laughs> Fucking just leak images of my real face. I'd be like... I'd ban you, first off. <laughs> Second off, I'd be like, why? Oh, wing stuff. Yeah, I don't even remember barely what I streamed on livestream.com. I remember um, there was one stream, like, forever ago, of, like, I think it was Butterfly Blues uh, stuff. For those of you unaware, uh, Butterfly Blues was my last webcomic that I did. I've done three. If you can believe it, um, uh, two of them, I think, don't exist anymore, because Smack Jeeves got nuked. Anyway, um, I was doing a Butterfly Blue stream, and I was just streaming, and, like, I went and I checked, like, the capture, or I think somebody in the chat was like, is something supposed to be happening? And I was like, wait, is nothing happening? And I checked the capture, and it was stuck 
on one frame from like 45 minutes ago and it just wasn't moving and I was like wow why would this happen I think that was the last stream I ever streamed on live stream or Picarto one of those can't remember Twitch is the is my favorite streaming platform by far smack Jeeves got smacked yeah Oh yeah, I forgot. This is real face cam. Spoonie doesn't look that different from their fursona. You're right. You're right. I never have to show people my picture. I never have to show people, like, a picture of me when I'm meeting them in person. It's like, oh, you don't- you just have to look for my vibes. You just have to look for me. And they're like, what? Are you sure? And it's like, nah, listen, you won't understand. I had a friend who was fursuiting at MFF. And I stood right in the middle of the aisle and I pointed at him. And then he took a minute because he was in a suit and he couldn't really see. And then he pointed back and was like, I know you. <laughs> that is how impeccable my vibes are. That is how much my vibes match. I am just my fursona in the real realm. It's real. I am real. Man, I just remembered I was supposed to take a selfie with my friend who was visiting and they were gonna draw over our selfie with our fursonas. I fucking forgot. I'm so sad now. I gotta tell him to come back and be like, no, we gotta take a picture. I'm so bad at taking pictures. I'll take pictures of plants. That's it. What a problem. I will I will meet a friend I haven't seen in like eight years and not take a picture of them. And then I'm like, well fuck. I will never remember what they look like ever again. You should draw over- it. We, we should all draw over it. We should draw over our, our- Oh my god, we should all do one. Holy shit, that would be fun. I think I'm even blepping in that one. I'll take pictures of other people, but that means I never have any pictures of myself. Yeah! Yeah, that's the problem. I think the last picture I took with my mom, I was like, I was like 18. That was a long time ago. I'm also just bad in general about uh, calling my family. I'll text my family every so often, but I never call them. I have the one from MFF, but we're all wrapped up in scarves and masks and bags. That one's also good, though. I think that that would also make a good, like, draw-over photo. Draw-over selfies and stuff are so fun. Impeccable. Impeccable vibes. This music makes me want to play Destiny. It just sounds like Destiny music. Oh, I haven't done the guess that game. I haven't done the guess the game of the day. Man. Have any of you played guess the game? It's kind of like Wordle, but it's photos of like a video game. And it's like obscure photos at first, and then it gets more and more like apparent what the game is. The other day, uh, the first photo was like one of the first shots in the uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 opening cutscene, and I was really pissed because I knew it right away. 
It was the shot of, like, the shell or whatever on the beach, and I was like, God damn it! I know this one. Shit. I hate it. I hate that I knew. My dark past. Sneaking in. Janie, welcome back. Has anybody played We Love Katamari? Because I love the menu and We Love Katamari being like three different maps that you can walk across with people that show up for your levels. One of the characters is a dude in uh, he's a little kid with a inner tube, I think. And uh, all the characters when they have a mission for you, they raise their hand up and they say like a different greeting. And so the dude in the the kid with the inner tube his thing he says is hoi 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 those voices those greetings are ingrained into my brain i remember like all of them hello 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 Your Majesty? Your Majesty? No, it's from Wind Waker. It's beautiful. God, I love this song. I love Earthworm Jim music so much. That's another soundtrack, just like Ape Escape. It had no business going so hard. Oh, there was one kid that go that that like that was the first level. He he went, yes, yes. My favorite was the origami kid. Origami, origami. That became like a meme with my like middle school friends. To the point where um. My my best friend had like a a bear from Build a Bear workshop, and I recorded. It had like a recording box, so you could record anything you wanted. And I recorded origami, <laughs> and she found it several years later, like ten years later, and then pressed the play button, and it said it, and she lost her shit, and she's never erased it. It's always been origami. Every Sega soundtrack and sound effect is embedded in my brain. Dude. Sega sound chip was great. Dude. God. I miss when weird games came from big companies and you had to picture someone in a suit rubber stamping ideas like Katamari. Katamario! Imagine a Katamari and Mario uh, crossover. That'd be silly. Yeah, I was just talking about this the other day, is like, I really miss when like, big name companies did like, really, um, creative, like, weird shit. Like, fever dream shit, sort of. So like, Katamari and like... God. Even Shadow of the Colossus was kind of like, really weird concept, but it, it was amazing. Like, experimental shit. Okami was another one, but I don't think Okami was like... I wouldn't call Okami a triple, triple A studio or anything. Katamari was done by Namco, though. So, that was a pretty big company. Pretty big company still. Nintendo is 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 the the game company that still takes a lot of risks, I think, and takes does like more experimental shit. Like, I would consider Splatoon pretty experimental. There are devs at big studios that are trying to do creative things, but they are meeting a lot of resistance from higher up. Yeah, that's what I figure is the problem. Um, definitely, I learned. Okay, speaking speaking of like modern game dev and stuff. I learned something. I learned something. Um, I or I heard something. I don't know. I don't know how true it is, but I it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, remember, like back in the day, like PS2 era and like earlier, there were way more like 
intellectual property games like games based off of movies games based off of like shows like kids shows and stuff that was way more of a thing there'd be like iCarly video games Barbie video games um you know anytime there was a movie coming out like Madagascar there would be a movie or there would be a game based off of that right um you don't really see that anymore do you Wonder how much room there is for AAA companies to do weird stuff when indies are filling that niche. Exactly, yeah. That's like an indie game thing now. Back when we had a movie tie-in for every system. Exactly. Like, literally every movie that came out, there would be a game made for it, right? Um, and that's not really a thing anymore. Turns out, the... Like, I imagine the only, like, real reason that that is a thing is because of modern, like, game, like, gaming standards. Um, they'd probably just lose money. Like, trying to make a game based off of this movie. Especially, like, realistic movies. they probably just lose money real fast immediately. <laughs> because production value is, like, so much higher with games. Like, that is- that is not lucrative enough. AAA companies could be doing much, much more creative or cartoony stuff if they wanted to. Um, it's not- Um, they just want to make as much money as possible. Yeah, you know, that's the unfortunate truth of capitalism. With capitalism, we are all slaves to it. sucks the creativity out of like like that indie games are the future indie games are like they are the future oh ugly pseudo 3d gba graphics yeah yeah it's expensive to make games in general now or at least games to the standards of gamers. Of, like, gamers TM, you know. God, okay. Speaking of indie games and gamers TM. Uh, a while back, and I think about this quite a bit. So, Airdorf, who is the dev for um, Faith, the, the Faith series. Which is, like, the Atari-style um, horror game. That probably, yeah, the, the first game that I played under the, the name Spoonie Plays. Um, <laughs> so, Airdorf has been working on the third chapter for quite a bit, and it's uh, a lot more intense than the other two chapters. Um, they have been um, doing a whole lot of rotoscoped animation, and it's, it's gonna be awesome. The, the trailer that came out, like, last September, I wanna say? Fucking radical. Somebody, like, left, like, a huge, like, bad negative review on, like, chapter two or something saying, like, what is this, what is this dude's problem? Why is this taking so long? It's taken, like, two years to make a game that has, like, shitty Atari graphics. What is the big deal? This shouldn't be taking this long. Game dev isn't that hard, basically, like, that sort of message. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> dude, games take a long time. And in a lot of ways, I think pixel art is harder. Because you have to make sure these things are legible. With very limited color palettes. Bitch, you make it. Dude, I hate so much when, when gamer bros think that making games is just tightening up the graphics on level 3. Dude, let me tighten up the graphics in level 3. Hey, why don't you change the lighting? Let me flip the switch on my armrest. Okay. No. You know something hilarious? I know many things hilarious. Tell me your hilarious things, thing, Janie. Oh. I'm getting that weather headache. I'm getting that weather headache. I feel it in my bones. It's gonna rain tonight, baby. I love that level 3 has independent graphics. 
The Titan the Graphics College is among the few colleges that they announced 100% student loan forgiveness for. Sick. Awesome. Amazing. Good for them. Good for them. Tightening up the, the, the student loans on level 3. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Awesome. Oh shit. Man, I was talking about it the other night. I was playing Destiny. As you do. Um, and I was saying, man, as a kid, it was my dream job to, like, make games. Um, what made me want to work on games is uh, I was obsessed with, like, you know, back in, like, the early 2000s and 90s, a lot of uh, games would have unlockable, like, behind-the-scenes content. Um, and I would watch a lot of, like, the concept art slideshows from, like, the Ratchet and Clank games. And I really liked watching those behind-the-scenes things for, like, Naughty Dog and, uh, Insomniac games in particular. And I was like, when I grow up, when I grow up and get big and strong and healthy, I want to work with Insomniac or Naughty Dog. And nowadays, I look back and I go, oh... Oh. Oh, Naughty Dog is not a good place to work now. Looks at looks at Last of Us 2. Not a good place. Not a good place to work now. At Insomniac? Is Insomniac nice? Are they good? Are they still good? Maybe I would still want to work for Insomniac. I like sleep too much. Weak. You're weak. Weak. Just kidding. Sleep is good for you. I'm really bad at sleeping, so I am an- I am- I have a slight case of insomnia, maybe. Um... Maybe not quite insomnia, but I do have trouble staying asleep. They're a very LGBT-friendly environment as far as AAA goes. I don't know about the workload, though. You know, I feel like any, like, AAA, uh... Uh, game company is gonna be really crunchy. Really crunchy. I didn't want to live in California. Yeah, that, that, that kind of sets me back a bit because I don't like California. I lived there for a year. I don't want to go back. I did... I, I've known um, a few people who have worked at Insomniac. There was uh, somebody who went to my high school who... Um, went, like, got a job after going to college, um, for Insomniac, which is pretty, pretty cool. As far as I know, Insomniac's pretty okay. Um, but I know there have, there's been news of Naughty Dog. Um, that makes me upset. Recent news, like, as, recent as of, like, two years ago. Which is super upsetting, but, you know, them's, them's the breaks. Which is so sad to me, because, like, Naughty Dog had pretty humble beginning be beginnings and was kind of treated like shit by Universal when they had that partnership with like Universal um because they made I want to put some sort of design on this just a very simple dollar no <laughs> um like Naughty Dog when they first started out um they l they worked out of a studio with no air conditioning all through summer while working on like Crash Team Racing or something and Universal was real shit to them so like now that they're like they, they've lived long enough to become the bad guy they were crunching back in the PS1 days I thought that was Universal that was doing that to them god damn it naughty dog you know what? I think I think any AAA game dev studio is going to be crunchy, especially like I don't know. It, it part of it is like not just game dev culture in general. Part of it is just like American work culture in general. Uh, I don't think this is exclusive to American game dev companies, but you know, let's go.
One of the problems with Naughty Dog is that they keep making hits. They're not going to ch change their method if it keeps making them money. Yeah, that's the thing, is Naughty Dog games are so fucking good. I don't know if I'll ever play Last of Us 2. Um, I'm sure it's amazing. The Last of Us, like, on its own, felt like... I was satisfied. I was satisfied with The Last of Us. I felt like that was a beautifully, like, tragic story, and it ended perfectly fine, in my opinion. It ended suddenly, and which was very fitting for that game's story. I liked how it ended. A lot of people did not. They were like, that was too sudden, I want more answers. And I'm like, no, I don't want more answers. I like it the way it is. I like this game. It's a good game. Oh. However, The Last of Us, I only played once. I don't think I'll ever be able to play it again, despite... I, I got the remaster for PS4, and I've never been able to play it because I played it once, and it was so painful that I try to play it again, and it's like every single scene, I'm like, oh god, oh god, it's this scene, and I don't want to play it. It's definitely an experience, but... It's an experience I only want to have once, so the fact that part two exists and is like, hey, you want to experience ten times more pain? I'm like, not really. I The first game was the right amount of pain. I'm kind of amazed how much The Last of Us Part 1 on PS5 has been enhanced. Yeah, they... It looks, it looks fine. But honestly, the, f the original looks better to me personally it's just the way they stylized it it was still like kind of hyper realistic but like they stylized it in a way it looked nice and i feel like it's it's still it still looks nice i think it's aged well honestly honestly it's it's not just a purely technical increase well that's cool if I was working at Naughty Dog, I wouldn't mind working on a project like that because optimi optimizing is kind of fun for me, but as a consumer, I want them to move on. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, um, The Last of Us is a great game. A great story, at least. Um, but it's it's so much. It's like, it's like Squid Game. Squid Game is awesome. Squid Game is such a good series, but it is so incredibly gut-wrenching and horrible. Um, horrible as in, like, painful, that I, as much as I really enjoyed the story and, and everything and the twists and turns, as much as I really enjoyed it, I would not watch it again. I would not watch it again. It's almost been 10 years since I've played the first Last of Us. I still don't want to play it again. I still don't want to play it again. When something is that tragic and emotional... It's tiring. I remember specifically, I like... Oh, scary music. Scary music. It's a different art style in The Last of Us Part 2? Yeah. Uh, my mom was, uh... I think my mom was coming to visit. My mom was visiting me. And, uh... My brother had gotten me The Last of Us for my birthday. That's why I got it. So he was asking me if I was enjoying it. Or, he was asking me how it was, and I was explaining to him, like, stuff that was currently happening in the game, which was all terrible shit. It was all, like, really terrible, gruesome shit. And then my mom, like, just idly asked, is it fun? And I said, no. And then she's like, why are you playing it? And I'm like, because it's good. And that's kind of my experience with a lot of things, honestly. I like tragic stuff. I just- I- I just feel like I can only experience it, like, once. Still uses lisp. What is that? I'm curious. Oh god, I keep getting attacked with, like, hunger. Just suddenly. Speaking of, um... I'm probably... I think I could finish this background, like, real quick. I say real quick, but, like, I think I can... 
do some highlights. Because there aren't that many highlight, many more highlights I need to do. Then I can put an overlay. Maybe, maybe add some things that I think might need to be put in here. Not quite sure. That'll work. That'll work. And uh, then we can take a quick break and I can figure out what to order for dinner tonight. And, uh, yeah. I'm fairly sure they don't use Lisp. It's a programming language. Jack and Daxter was programmed in Lisp. Oh, neat. Jack and Daxter is a fun game. I've talked about it before, and pretty recently. I love Jack and Daxter. And I really wish I could like the second game, but god, it's so insufferable. There's some neat- like, I think- I think they were being a little bit too ambitious with Jack 2. They might use it for some, some stuff, but I imagine a lot of it is in C++ nowadays, just so they can do more stuff with third-party SDKs, and so they don't have a hard time finding new programmers. Ah! Ah, I see. I really like the first game, and I appreciate that they tried to go in a different direction with the sequels, but Jack 3 is really fun. I feel like they, they figured their shit out by Jack 3. The thing about Jack 2 that is so insufferable to me... Um... One of the things about Jack 2 that's so insufferable to me is the fucking writing. Like, okay, the story is really cool. However, it is so incredibly misogynistic to the point where it hurts. I do- I, Jack 3 has so much better writing because I think Amy Hennig did the writing for it. And Amy Hennig also did uh, Uncharted and Soul Reaver. Amy Hennig is a treasure. She did- I, I think she came in to Uncharted, uh... Did she do Drake's Fortune? I'm not sure. I know she did Uncharted 2 and 3. And, uh, she went off to do something else during 4, so that's probably why the- why Uncharted 4 kind of went, eh, eh. Uncharted 4 is still fun. The writing just feels a little different. It really didn't feel like the same series. It, Jack 3 and- 2 and 3 are very different. Um, I'm- I'm pretty upset, honestly, that they- they introduced, like, the- the mechanic of, like, the eco in- in Jack and Daxter, where it's like, here, here are these energy wells, here are the- 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 the elements are, um, time, and, um, strength, and heat, and- what was the other one? I don't know, um, health or life. Yeah, uh, those were the elements. And that was like the coolest like concept to me is like, okay, so we have, instead of like earth, wind, water, fire, they went a little more creative. They're like, okay, these are the, the building bo blocks of the universe, time, strength, uh, heat, and um, you know, life. And then also corruption, which was dark ego, right? Uh, I don't know exactly what element that uh, light eco is, or white eco, whichever one you call it. Um, they had this really cool thing. It's like, here, here, you can use blue eco, you can uh, get really fast. And uh, here you can use green eco is how you heal. And uh, yellow eco, you can shoot fireballs because it's heat. And this eco, red eco, is you get real strong. And that was really neat. And <coughs> they just dropped that shit in Jack 2 and 3 entirely. Not entirely. You had the dark eco and light eco powers. But you know, that's cool and all, but I want the other ones. How they built a cool world in the first game, then it feels like they kind of threw it away. Yeah, as much as Haven City is pretty cool. I do like the aesthetic of Haven City and, uh... Spargus? What's the other one? Jack 3. Mad Max World. <clears throat> I don't know. I like the aesthetics of those different cities. 
Here's the thing that's confusing about the the Jack 2 and 3 to me. Um, in comparison to Jack and Daxter. One of the big brain ideas they had for Jack and Daxter was they were like, oh shit, on the PS2, we can make a game like an open world platformer and not have to have a hub world. We can just do that. And that was like the big thing is that from any place on the map, you could just walk to another place and then suddenly be in a new area. And that was like their big like achievement. That is the thing that they were most excited about. Is they're like, cool, you can go from this village and then you can walk into the forest and then there's this area. And that was the coolest thing about Jack and Daxter and that's what they wanted to make a game around. Jack 2 and Jack 3, essentially you can do the same thing, right? But guess what? Anytime you want to go into a new area, guess what? There's a big old fuck all door that takes 10 seconds to open because it's a secret loading screen. So it's just not, it's not the same. It's stupid. It's dumb. And that's why, that's, that's the thing, that's the thing about Jack 2 and 3 that pisses me off. That's one of the many things. Jack 2 in particular had insufferable writing where it, it, it didn't, it felt like they didn't understand what their, who their audience was. Because the thing was, um, back in the early 2000s is they just started, like, realizing that more and more adults and, like, older teens, or just teens in general, were the ones playing games. And it wasn't so much just children, just, like, young children playing games anymore. And so they were like, fuck, um, kids aren't really playing games as much. We need to get edgy. We need to get edgy. That That is that is what spawned the existence of Shadow the Hedgehog. That is what made uh, Ratchet and Clank start going the edgy route, too. And so Jack 2 and Ratchet and Clank, to a degree, started having all this weird, fucked up, misogynistic, like, haha, what do we do? Do we do potty humor? Do we do, do we do, like, sex humor? What do we do? And it felt really weird and gross. And I don't, I don't miss this era of games, because even as a kid, I was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, they thought they had to chase their old audience instead of finding new ones. You know what? I would have been totally fine if they kept Jack and Daxter to the to that aesthetic that they had in the first game. Because I liked that. That was cute. That was fun. And it was it still had like the cool like fantasy intrigue. I really liked the aesthetic of I really liked the aesthetic in general of the Jack and Daxter series. And I really wish that the fuck god the Jack 2 writing was not so insufferable. One of the things, one of the things that really turned me off of from like Jack 2 uh, wasn't just like the constant misogynistic and gross humor. Um, there was like some mission where I was, I was trying to save like this alien um, who was a slave from being imprisoned. I was trying to break him out or some shit. And I go up to this alien and he's speaking in broken English in what sounds like a really racist uh, uh, fucking accent. And I was like, dude, what? No! That's bad. If you're gonna, if you're gonna have an alien, that's like, no! Think about this for one second, naughty dog. Think about this for one second. That's fucked up. What are you doing? Naughty dog. And I see nobody talking about this. But that's probably because everybody just has nostalgia for Jack 2 and then they go and try to play it and then they go, oh, this sucks. And then they don't finish it again and they just want to live off the nostalgia and that's it. I love cute and fun shit, but the industry thinks it, it, I don't really matter that much even though series like Pokemon continue to print money. Yeah. Even when the Pokemon games are really mediocre, which most of them are, let's be real. I'd say over this Pokemon song. I love Pokemon so much. It's so much more fun. Space racist is different than regular racist. No, no. Fantasy, okay. There's a lot of shit with fantasy ra racism that's like trying to like 
paint a metaphor or something. And sometimes it's fine. Sometimes it's fine. But when you are giving, giving your alien, your slave alien, a, like, like, a stereotypical, like, no, <laughs> accent. Stop. Stop. I swear to God. Nintendo's whole thing is making cute and fun stuff, but the Western world still thinks it's a niche audience. No! Dude, Japan's, like, whole shit has been to, like, make everything cute. Like, when, when it comes to the localization of Western titles. And, like, it's always been like that. And then the other way around for America. Like, you bring Kirby over here, you gotta make Kirby fucking angry. You gotta make sure Kirby's incredibly just indignant. So, um, young boys want to play Kirby. They don't want to play as a little pink puffball. They want to- they- if he's angry, they do. They gotta make sure he's violent and angry. The localization of, like... Localization is such a fascinating subject to me, to be- to be honest. I blame Sega. Oh, I was gonna talk about this and then I forgot about it. I was watching classic game commercials last night because Vinny was- had a stream of it recently. And I was watching the VOD. I've been chipping away at that. It's a nice, like thing to watch at night. Sega had the most unhinged commercials in the 90s. Like, absolute batshit. Oh. Sometimes that happens. Um. Like, Sega's whole shit was like, we gotta make everything uh, super edgy, so teenage boys wanna play this. This isn't a system for girls. This isn't a system for babies. We gotta make everything edgy. We gotta make sure it's all edgy. Oh yeah, Sega's marketing campaign in the 90s definitely changed who games were for. Sony had some pretty unhinged uh, commercials. But it felt like a like they were just trying to be funny. Not necessarily they were trying to demean anybody who was uh who was interested in in, in Nintendo. It's crazy to me that it actually worked. You know, you know I never really thought about this. That's what happened. That is totally what happened. Oh, you know what? I wanna- I wanna change this. I think- I think this doesn't work for this. I don't wanna make the lighting- Oh, wrong one. Wrong layer. I don't wanna make the lighting, like, part of this. I wanna make the lighting an actual, like, separate layer. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that! Oh yeah, no. Sega- Sega was being demeaning as fuck. Oh, wait. Unless you mean Sony. I think Sony was also... But not nearly as demeaning as Sega. Sega wasn't hiding anything. I mean, Sony did have the Crash Bandicoot yelling out of a megaphone at Nintendo headquarters. So, I mean... They did have a bit of that. Console Wars? I have not read that. Saga! The author got most of their information from the former CEO of Sega of America, and it shows- Oh, damn. Hate that. Hate to see it. Dude, the crazy thing is, even though Sega, like, was a trend center, setter, I guess, and, like, changed what, who games were for... Even though that was a thing. Even though that was a thing. Sega, like, was- made the t most terrible, like, business decisions otherwise. Oh, shoot. That's, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Oh boo boo. Oh boo boo. Sega was the most wildly mismanaged company. I cannot even believe the story of the 32X. I don't think Sega of America understood what made those early Sonic games good. Oh yeah, absolutely. If there's anything Sega doesn't understand, it's why people like Sonic. 
Sega is, uh... It's, just, it's the same kind of shit as, like, Konami. Konami and Sega don't understand what makes their shit good. They never know what to do. You know what? I thought this was Dire Dire Docs, and I, I feel like a fool. Now that I'm looking over at Celeste. I'm such a fool. Your magical pool of water. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. It looks so cozy. It looks so cozy. Cozy and nice. Okay, let's... Okay, maybe, maybe a little bit more. I think some, uh, some, uh, Zale fans will be very excited to know what outfit Zale will be in, in this scene. He, he's gonna be wearing nothing but pants. Nothing but pants. Nothing but pants. Okay, I think this is done. I think this is done. I have not drawn that sprite yet. But it won't be that hard. Okay, safe. He's in PJs. Okay. 1920. Check it out how small it is now. What do we think? What do we think? I think I like this. I think this is nice. I think this is cozy. I think this is cozy. I think it's like fantastical. Cozy as fuck. Nice. I really, I really love drawing like people's uh Oh, I was in the right folder, and then I exited out. What a fool I am. I really like drawing people's, uh, bedrooms. It's my favorite thing to do. BG Zale Room. As far as backgrounds go, at least, this is my favorite thing to do. Because the thing about, like, backgrounds and, like, places... Places have about... Have as much personality as people. Especially, like considering the people who inhabit them. You can you can learn so much about somebody by just um what? Um what was I saying? I got side sidetracked. Um places have about as much personality as a person. Um, <clears throat> and you can learn so much about somebody by just, like, the little trinkets and stuff around their living space. You can learn about their routines and stuff. Like, maybe Zale is over here and reading a, reading a book. Uh, maybe Zale got this plant from Dandy, because they're friends. Maybe Zale has bad allergies, and that's why he has to have a little tissue box at, on hand at all times. Granted, that coffee table is a little far away from the from the couch, but you know. I just don't understand what you're you're telling me. You know what? <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta realize people are only showing up to start shit. Anyway, got a little vinyl player thing. Got some guitars because plays the guitar plays piano has a bionicle see look how crusty this is in the in the actual aspect aspect rate ratio I, I moved out of it has a TV with a really cool stand has a lot of rugs because there's rocks on the ground it's probably uncomfortable so you're learning a lot about Zale also there's an iPad instead of actual sheet music modern it's very minimalistic, like, decorations. Only, like, convenience stuff, except for maybe the plant and the bionicle. We've learned a lot about Zale, just from this image. There's also a water cave right over here. Like, that's important. That's important to know. You probably just fall in, walk it around, you play a little vinyl. 
yeah, bedrooms tell you a lot about a character than just the appearance. Appearance. So I am gonna do a BRB. I'm gonna BRB because I'm gonna. I want to figure out food. Important aesthetics. True. Uh, but when we come back, I'm gonna continue on Ezra's room. This is what it looks like so far. Um, and here's what it looks like with the Sims. <laughs> here's what it looks like with the Sims. However, I want this to be... I want this to be a canopy bed, but I also don't want these candles to be obscured. I'm a little torn. I'm a little torn. Maybe I can make it a translucent canopy bed. Anyway, this is what we got so far. This is what we got so far. We could probably fill these shelves up a little bit more. Oh yeah, this middle shelf, we definitely want to put more stuff. Uh, we can brainstorm. You guys can brainstorm for like things that Ezra would have on a shelf. It's up to you. It's up to you. These are all kombucha jars, by the way. Could probably put more kombucha jars. She likes kombucha. Could figure that out. Anyway, let's BRB. I'm gonna figure out food. I'll be back in like a bit, like five minutes at most, probably. We'll see. I'm gonna turn this off and turn the music up.
I'm so upset. I'm so sad. The place that I usually get my my baba ganoush, my little vegetarian appetizer plate with falafel and baba ganoush and hummus. It doesn't have that anymore. Oh! I'm trying to find something that's also acceptable. Damn it. No, I don't want rice with it. I just want hummus. God damn it. Fuck everything. I'm so sad. I am so sad. Where is it? I want it! <laughs> uh, Alright, give me a few more minutes. I'm gonna figure out what I want to eat. I just had to share that because I'm mourning. It's Baba Gagan. Oh wait, I found it. It's called something different. It's called Fala Hummus, which is stupid, but I'm gonna get it. Okay, we're back. All right. Um Yes. Okay, one little aside. Just cuz I was curious, like what the fuck? I looked up slang, like spoony slang. What does spoony mean? Okay. Informal adjective dated uh, this is a dated, like an old, old definition, like informal definition of Spoonie. Sentimentally or fo foolishly amorous. Here's an archaic noun of Spoonie. A simple, silly, or foolish person. You know what? That fits. That makes sense. Also... There is the more modern uh, definition of Spoonie with IE at the end that people have been using to mean people who can only use a limited amount of spoons in a day. That's fine. My name came first, and also there are no negative connotations really with that. That's just a thing. So I don't understand what the fuck. <laughs> I was just curious. Regardless. 
Regardless, you can tell. You can tell when people just show up to a chat and they're specifically ju just trying to show up to push some buttons. Start shit in some way. If their opening act is, wow, there's a lot of weight to that name. What the fuck do you mean? Get out of here. Then I delete your message. It's like, oh, good call. I deserve that. Okay, get banned. <laughs> Your first mistake was trying to understand. Yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. And calling attention to it even more. That is another mistake. I was just curious. I was truly curious. Anyway. Uh, genuinely curious, I should say. But, anyway. Anyway. Back to it. You know what? You know, let's, let's, not, let's not have myself looking down for a bit. Boop. Here's the thing. Me, like, two years ago, I was, like, very skittish about, like, banning people. Uh, because I was like, you know, they might actually be a good person. Even if I get, like, bad vibes or they start, like, start trying to start ship, uh, I should wait until they actually do a bad thing, um, to, like, a bannable offense. That is never the way to go, I have learned. The way to go is if somebody just, like, you can tell that they want to start shit. Like, immediately, if, if somebody's opening line is just, like, trying to start shit, that's a bannable offense. Goodbye. You're, you're making the, ri the vibes, the vibes, the vibes rancid just by your existence. So, uh, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to call attention to this specific moment, but it is, it is definitely, like, it's something I have learned, like, within the past year, that there is nothing wrong with just, like, if somebody is giving you rancid vibes, just, just block them. Just ban them. It is way more important to cultivate, like, like, good vibes for your community instead of just being like, well, this person might, uh, support me or this person might be an actually, like, good person. No, stop. If there's a red flag that goes up, bam. Get him. If your first message has to have the precursor, I'm probably getting timed out for this one. Yeah, you're you're trying to start shit. Yeah, this is, doesn't just apply to like um streams. This applies to just like life in general. This definitely just applies to life in general. Especially like internet life. Which, a lot of us, like, a lot of our lives are on the internet. We're on the internet right now. Congrats. But yeah. Um. This is, this is kind of a... <laughs> this is an unfortunate, like, this is, this is the story specifically that made me go, I need to get stricter. I need to get stricter and I need to stop being a little shit. And like, actually just go ahead and, and use my ban hammer a little bit more, like, uh, frequently. Like, just ban people at will. Just somebody starts saying shit, just ban them. Um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There was, uh, there was, like, some kid. There was some kid who would, uh, come to my streams, like, early on, way early on, when I was, uh, on YouTube. And some of you, some of you have been following me quite a bit. Uh, I think Soul might remember, uh, this. Um, back in the day, I was streaming on YouTube first. And I was streaming Final Fantasy VII. And there was a kid who would show up to my streams who was, uh, mostly harmless. I say mostly. Um, kind of annoying. Because they were, they were a kid. Uh, but I would mostly, like, I, I wanted to be courteous. I wanted to be nice, even though they made the vibes pretty rancid. <laughs> So soul knows where I'm getting it. So soul knows where I'm going. Uh said kid, I made okay, so a little bit of backstory. I made a video uh, a while back. Um it is my it is my magnum opus. It is called How Kingdom Hearts Made Everyone Gay. That's the title. It's a clickbait title. It is hyperbole. It is in fact the video is talking about how Kingdom Hearts made no one gay, 
and a lot of gay people just happened to like Kingdom Hearts. And everybody would have found out they were gay if they, uh, did or didn't play Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts had nothing to do with them realizing they were gay. This kid found this video and commented to the effect of, How dare you insult Kingdom Hearts, I hope you die. But, like, spelled really wrong. And, uh... Me, being a little shit, did not think in that moment I should ban this child. I did not think in that moment I should ban this child right now. Granted, I think I think things still would have gotten out of hand. Um, but I think I think I that should have been the moment. <laughs> I mean, we've been talking about a lot of like horror stories. Uh, when it comes to people not understanding, like, social boundaries on the internet. Um, especially children. Uh, but instead I went, nah, this is just a kid. They're just trying to do this for attention. I- I don't- I don't really care. Um... So they continued to come to my streams and not ever acknowledge anything that was happening in the stream. And, uh, only talked about, like, things that were happening in their life and never actually w stayed on topic. Which is why- which is one of the many reasons why one of my rules in my chat is please stay on topic. Please go with the flow of the conversation. Don't come in here while everybody is talking about, like, Cult of the Lamb or whatever is happening on stream. Talking about Naughty Dog and Game Dev. And then come in here and be like, Guess what? I ate a pixie stick today! Yeah. Or like, guess what? I cut my thumb today. It's bleeding everywhere. Oh god. That's just like a child internet thing that kids do. Anyway, so this is the kind of kid that this kid was. Um, there was one point where uh, I got particularly heated. I got particularly angry because they started making fun of me <laughs> for getting emotional during a scene in a game. And I was like, dude, fuck you. And then I banned them. Finally, finally, I should have done it earlier. I should have done it earlier. Um, and, uh, this kid, this child. Oh, also, one of the things this kid did was, um, was ask me constantly if I was a furry. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and, um, but that aside, so I banned this kid. And f from... From then on, every time I tried to stream on YouTube, some Sonic character would show up in my chat. Sally Acorn, Jet the Hawk, you name it. Every Sonic character ever in existence would show up and be like, Hi, you should unban X so-and-so. They did nothing wrong. And I was like, oh boy, here we go again. I remember being a little incensed that the kid would have the audacity to criticize you for crying over a game you grew up with. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, like, that, that, like, shame on me. Shame on me. Like, there, I am, I am definitely, like, 100% the one at fault here. Honestly, I should have, I should have banned this kid, like, from the start. I, I was a fool for being, like, I want to see, like, I, I, I don't want to ban this kid because it's just a kid. No! Fucking ban them! Fucking ban them! Just ban them from the start. This kid, like, this kid didn't know better. This kid was just a kid trying to make funny jokes. Like, that is totally, like, that is totally fine. That is okay. Like, then this kid is going to have to go through some shit to learn, like, not to be rude. Um, but if this, if somebody whether they're a kid or not, is giving you rancid vibes, block them on sight. Don't give them the chance to attack you with the entire Sonic cast. You banned the wrong kid, now Knuckles is pissed. You better let them back into the stream. You should really unban my friend. They did nothing wrong. They didn't know any better. Better. That is, like, a thing I've noticed kids, like, these days will do. It's really strange. Is, like... 
it's like, it's just such a thing where, where they'll be like, hey, my friend got unfairly banned. Can you please unban them? And it's not, it's not, they're, it's just them with a sock puppet account. It's, it's like, no. Like, why is this such a prominent thing with kids the, of this generation? You just, and, and you just end up like blocking like every single child that comes your way and is like, you should really unban so-and-so. They did nothing wrong. They, they want to apologize. And it's like, you're 12. You're 12. You shouldn't be on the internet. Get off. Gotta love this song. Anyway, I had to stand on my soapbox for a bit. Uh, basically, moral of the story. Don't, don't wait on ban- Like, if you think, I should ban this person because they are being mean, or they are being stupid, or they are giving me rancid vibes, or, you know, they're trying to start shit, ban them. Just ban them. Don't wait. Just wait until Tails hears about this. If there's one thing Tails cares about, it's unbanning trolls from live streams. Yeah. Hey, that was actually their brother. It was just a joke. Please, please unban them, please. Yeah, it's it's such a... Internet culture is so strange. There was... Okay, there is a funny story. Let's, let's end this on a happy note. Let's end this on a happier note. There's a funny story of like somebody was just saying some shit. This is like after this is when I when I started streaming on Twitch and I had learned my lesson to just ban people based on on bad vibes. So somebody was giving me bad vibes. They were just saying some dumb shit uh, that had nothing to do with anything. And so I banned them on site. And then I got a message from my friend and it was like rude. And I was like, what? And he was like, that was me in your chat. And I was like, why are you being all weird and rancid? And he was like, I don't know, I thought you'd think it was funny. And I'm like, I didn't know it was you. It wasn't a username I recognized. So I unbanned him. <laughs> Sometimes your friends just show up to start shit and you don't realize it's them. And you ban them. That is how flippant you have to be about your banning. I'm telling you, you, t you, you gotta, you gotta just do it. See, the, the error, the error of my ways today is I should have read that first line. I'm probably gonna get muted for this and then just ban them on site. Not read the rest of that line. I would have just kept them banned for a bit. You know, you, you, you have a good point. Oh, hello, Devin. The internet equivalent of when a friend drives by you walking down the street and then honks their horn and it's terrifying. Listen, that actually happened. That actually happened to us the other day. We were going down the street and uh, we were both wearing masks. So, you know, sometimes people are mean, uh, especially people driving by because they're cowards and they don't want to fight. They don't want to fight. They, they don't want to say to your face. They just want to drive by and go, <laughs> you know. And uh, the other day, Somebody, like, um, drove by and stopped and was like, why, hello there! And I was like, oh god, here we go. Um, and it turned out it was one of- it was one of our friends. And we didn't recognize him. And we were like, oh shit, we thought you were harassing us. Wow! I don't really talk to friends like that in public either, because I don't want to give strangers the impression that behavior like that is okay. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. A friend acting rude as fuck. He wasn't acting rude. He was just saying dumb shit. And it was like... I don't even remember what he was saying. I just remember it was silly. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I just banned him. <laughs> don't you wish you could ban your racist grandma at, at, at Thanksgiving? I wish... Sometimes I wish the internet and real life worked the same. Like, don't you wish, like, you could be walking down the street and somebody starts catcalling you? Don't you wish you can just, like, like, click ban next to their name above their head and they suddenly disappear? Crocodiles are better than dog? Sure. 1,000 rats. Incredible. 
All right, here's an example. There we go. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. An example shows up. Fucking incredible. Fucking incredible. Fucking incredible. I love it when examples show in when I'm talking about them. Thanks for showing up, 1,000 rats. I hope you never show up again. HA! <laughs> you can't! You can't! Right. Cool. Real volunteer from the crowd moment. For sure. You know, there are a few phrases. There are a few phrases that are immediately bannable offenses. We talked about one earlier, and it was, Senpai noticed me! Bannable offense. That's one phrase. Another phrase? I walk- I'm on the weird part of the internet again. Banned. What did I walk into? Banned. Unless, unless, unless I'm talking about an, a, a particularly strange subject. If you just walk in and I'm talking about something completely benign and you're like, What the fuck did I just walk into? Get out. Banned. If you come in and you're like, What's this furry shit doing on Twitch? Banned. Rats, rats, where the- OH SHIT! <laughs> That's a clippable moment. I'm gonna- I'm gonna- I'm gonna write that timestamp down. Use as an example. Where's my- How long have I been streaming? It is not telling me. Oh, that's fine. I'll figure it out. I'll find it later. I'll remember. I was drawing a desk. New Spoonie shorts. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. My frame rate dropping. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a new short. God, I hope I get my baba ganoush. I hope my, I hope my food comes with baba ganoush. I don't think it does. I think it's just hummus now, and I'm very sad about that. It's been three hours? Whoa. Oh damn, I don't have much longer then. My food gets here at 6.30. Oh! Metro Foxen, thank you so much! Welcome in! Thanks for the five bits, appreciate you. Welcome in. We're drawing some backgrounds. You need to get food soon too? What you, what you getting? What you, what you getting? Are you gonna get falafel too? Please get it. Oh. Fuck yeah. Falafel gang. Best gang. I have been, like, lately... It's like, it's not like hunger will gradually rise. I will just be not hungry, and then suddenly I am hit with, like, so much hunger. Like, hang hangry hunger. And I'm like, homie, would love some food right now. Recently I made some baba ganoush, the best way to consume eggplant. Shh, for sure. What is baba ganoush? Uh, tell me, tell me, like, I know it's eggplant. What else is it? What else is in it? I know it's just really salty. Like, what kind of spices, what kind of other things do you put in baba ganoush? I've never made it myself. I know it goes into, like, hummus. That's like chickpeas and, like, what is it? Tzatziki? It's not tzatziki. Tahini. Yeah. Tzatziki and tahini sound similar. They're not the same, though. Ugh. I'm so ready for food. It's gonna be a good time. Mediterranean food is great if you're trying to cut down on meat. Oh, for sure. See... 
The thing about this place, this Mediterranean, like, Greek food place I've been ordering from forever is, like, the main- the thing I would always get is the vegetarian platter. Because it had falafel, baba ganoush, hummus, and, like, oh, what is it called? A d fucking Jerusalem salad? The cucumbers and tomatoes and stuff? This shit's so good. And that's why I was so upset. And it also comes with two pieces of pita bread. And it was like, it was like eight to 10 bucks. And so when I didn't, when I saw it was not on there, I was really sad. That is why I was so sad, because that's so much food. And it's so filling and it's so healthy. Maybe not so healthy, but it, it, it is so good for you. Compared to other like faster foods. Sucks. I don't know why I jumped so quickly to draw this desk instead of anything else. Give me- chat, give me some stuff. Give me some stuff to put on the shelves. As I wait for your responses, I'm gonna continue. It's a good desk. I like it. I like Ezra's room being, like, homey. Like, full of clutter, but, like, nice clutter. You know? Does this make sense? I hope it makes sense. Made it with barbecued eggplant, tahini, okay. Cumin, garlic, lemon, olive oil, some other stuff I can't remember, and paprika and pine nuts to garnish. Ooh, pine nuts. Ooh, spooky music. Yes. Oh, soul, you make a oh, hourglass? Good. Okay, we need a cool hourglass, too. I've seen some pretty sexy hourglasses. That's a really fitting thing. Really fitting item that Ezra would have. I think. I'm dancing. Maybe, maybe someday soon, maybe someday soon, y'all will be able to see me dance to my funky music. What does that mean? Well, you'll just have to find out someday. Look out for something soonish. Maybe at the end of game dev month. Maybe at the end of game dev month. I will have something ready. Where you can see me dance. Full body tracking? Maybe not full body tracking. But at least tracking. Remember back in the day when I was 3D? And had hands that didn't work right. I'm gonna look up a cool hourglass. Cool hourglass. looking a lot of these are too much like too gaudy I like this one it's so far away come closer my friend put it on the bottom shelf it's a big boy Ooh. Ooh. So funny that you were 3D before you were 2D. Yeah. It's a big hourglass. Gives you more time. 
She probably okay. Let's let's add to the Ezra lore. Probably uses this like while meditating. Probably meditates and then like opens her eyes right as the last grain falls. And she's like, oh fuck yeah, I did it. Also for board games. You know, I don't know. I don't know if if uh I'm trying to think, would Ezra be I don't think Ezra I she is in my brain. She's in my brain and she's like, fuck board games. And I'm like, okay, I guess I guess Ezra doesn't like board games. <laughs> You no, know, these are things I'm considering, but Ezra is like a demon that lives in my head. She has like the most like agency out of every character I've ever had. She's very like new age, like spiritualist. Ezra Ezra is an interesting like character. Um So you know you know like new age like um, witches and, like, Wiccan and Pagan and, like, all that stuff. Ezra is exactly, like, into all of that stuff, but also, like, doesn't really believe in it, but, like, pretend- like, does at the same time. So, like, she's the type of person who has rocks, like, collects, like, gemstones and rocks and stuff, um, because she thinks they're neat. She just thinks they're neat. And she likes having them around and putting them around. And, uh, does she actually believe that they, like, provide good energy? Not really, but because she likes them, they give good energy anyway. And that's how she thinks about these things. She's like, yeah, fuck yeah, I have this quartz over here. It brings good energy. Does it really? No. But I like it, so it does. <laughs> What's the opposite of a, of a game? A board series? Oh. Incredible. Moonpie, are you trying to tell me something? Are you trying to tell me something? Is there something you need to tell me? There's a- there's something, um, I think I've shared this story before, but I think it's been a while. There's something a friend has told me that I feel like kind of resonates with, like, Ezra's whole vibe. Is, um... So, I've talked about how we used to chant in the theater. Um, it was like our little meditation kind of deal. We would, uh, we would do ohms in the theater and harmonize. And, uh, so, there was one time I brought incense into the theater. Uh, as we were harmonizing. Because we, the whole thing, the whole reason we did in the theater is it was completely dark completely dark. You go far enough into the theater, you go into the mezzanine, it's pitch black if there are no lights on. And, uh, so, we went in there, uh, I brought in some incense, and I, so, in the dark, you could see the little tiny, like, ember in the dark, a little tiny orange ember in the dark. And as we were chanting, it went out. And we were all like, ah. And, um, so, somebody was like, Let's uh let's ohm to to relight it. Let's let's ohm until it relights. And so we we were ohming and being like, yeah, it's gonna relight, it's gonna relight. And um so we kept doing it and then it did relight. It relight. We saw like a flicker of flame and then it relit itself. And we were like, holy shit! Whoa! And then I made the comment, you know, it probably did that because we were stirring up the air by ohming. And, uh, enough of the air just caused the, the fire to reignite. And, uh, one of my friends was like, Even if that's true, it's still magic. And I was like, huh. And, like, that kind of attitude about, like, um... Like, having that skeptic attitude about stuff and being like, Well, here's the explanation for this. And, uh, but still being like, yeah, but that's still magic. You know, even if there's a scientific explanation for it, it's still a magical thing. It is very much Ezra's attitude about life. 
That's the same reason people collect Bionicle, too. Bionicle are known to possess powerful healing properties. This is true. If someone enters chat and sit, says you're chanting, then start the fire, ban them. It's true. I will ban them. I think about, like... Are there trolls out there who, like, show up to a chat and, like, wait for the right moment to, like, uh, counteract somebody's, like, conversation? I feel that way about astrology and tarot. I don't believe in anything metaphysical, but it can be a fun, silly excuse to connect with people and then become significant through connection. Exactly. I, I feel the same exact way about tarot and astrology. Like, do I actually think... Um, people being born at a certain time of year under a certain constellation of stars uh, affects their personality. No, I don't. However, um, astrology having all of these vague descriptions and uh, personality types, uh, people are able to like project and like see themselves in certain descriptions. Like, I can read some parts of like a description of how a Gemini might act and be like, okay, that and that and that part are me. Those parts feel like me. However, do I believe that being born at the beginning of June makes me act like that? No. The same thing with tarot is like the tar all the tarot like definitions or, or all the tarot meanings um, that you will find are vague enough that you can apply them at any point in your life or at to something in your life especially if you are a full ass adult uh you can read a certain card and you can find what you need from it and introspect that way tarot is a perfect wonderful way to introspect it's is it a form of divinity no absolutely not divinity is not real um but it is a wonderful way to introspect you are always going to be able to apply something from a tarot card to your life, no matter what tarot card you draw. And that is just facts. And it's still magic, in my opinion. And there are things, there are like spells and stuff. There's like, um, like a confidence spell. And like, what are the things that you have to do? Oh, well, you have to, you have to draw like a hot bath and you have to turn all the lights off and then you have to put like candlelight around the bath bath and uh, or candles all around the bath and you have to put rose petals into the pool or into into <laughs> into the bath not the pool and uh, you have to do all these like nice things for yourself and then you have to repeat these uh, mantras to yourself i am confident i am beautiful i am all these things of course that's going to help your confidence of course that's going to, to like help like Repeating these things to yourself and treating yourself kindly like that, that is going to help. Is it because the spell is magic and, and beautiful and, and like it's, costing, it's causing an incantation on your soul? No, it's because you are repeating these things to yourself and being kind to yourself. Of course, it, of course it's going to be make you feel confident, but that still makes it magic. It works. I read a guide on tarot that recommended making a journal and keeping track of which readings came true and which ones didn't, which was interesting because it was a scientific approach to tarot. Yeah. Yeah. God, I love... Granted, I did just trace that hourglass, but I love it. <laughs> People argue that music sounds better on vinyl, but I think the thing that makes the experience better is the ritual of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna just put these books... Ezra can have little a book as a treat. Tarot is such a great reflection tool. It always just clarifies for me what I already knew and thought deep down. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I love tarot so much. It's not magic. It's just a, a wonderful like reflection tool. You're going to get from it what you what you want to see, what you what you need to hear and what you need to see. Yeah, I don't think music sounds better on vinyl, but the act of, like, the ritual of, like, putting a record down, putting the needle on it, 
It's really nice. Music as a sensory experience and the visual and tactile experience that playing things on vinyl gives you definitely contrib contributes to it as a whole. Exactly. You're going to get from it what you want to see. Oh, so it's like Google. Sort of. If you want to put it that way. Like, you already know what you have to do in life. And the tarot is going to tell you exactly what you need to do. Especially if you're, like, trying to deny it. That's the thing. I feel like the difference between calling something science and calling it magic is whether you feel like you have to explain it. Yeah. Yeah. Tarot is a science. You know what? Speaking of rocks, I'm going to put a rock here. Quartz. I'm going to put my Jupiter egg. I have this egg I got from a, a gift shop. It's like an egg rock, and if you shine it up to the light, it glows like yellow inside, and I call it the Jupiter egg. Don't ask me why. I couldn't tell you. It's because it's blue and yellow. Or, yeah, it's blue and yellow. And, you know, the latest images of Jupiter are blue and yellowish. Don't ask me why. I'll tell you. Right now. This is kind of a bare shelf. I'm looking at- I'm looking at my stuff on my desk right now and I'm- I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna put a jar. put a rock in it because why not another it's marimo ezra has a marimo she named it mario it's got a little piece coming off of it because it's stressed out a decapitated amiibo nah she wouldn't have that ezra's not a gamer Ezra doesn't do the gaming. This looks like a Christmas... Christmas, uh... Cactus. Ezra seems like a, a Christmas cactus person. Cactus person in general. I like that Zale and Ezra have plants in, in their rooms. Because. Because. Dandy definitely gave them these plants. You know what? I'm gonna put an incense thing. That's just ready to go. It's just ready to go. Gotta go make a lemon meringue pie? Awesome! Have fun. I will have fun with the rest of the stream. I think I might wrap up a bit soon. Oh yeah, you can absolutely- like, that. that is the whole point of, like, making a room for a character. Is, like, you can build so much lore about th this character. Um, in Ezra in particular, I actually, like, your the character- the main character gets the option to, like, inspect different parts of her room. So I wrote a bunch of stuff, um, recently, so you could figure- so I could figure out how to draw said room. So it worked out. It worked out nice. Nice and good. I'm gonna put more papers. More papers. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Oh, it's fine. It's 
one. Another way you could, uh, you draw backgrounds is, uh, Clip Studio Paint has, like, a whole lot of assets in their asset store. But just 3D objects that you can place in any way you want. And that could help really, like, build a room. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Real quick. Check this out. Oh lord. Just a desk. Just a desk. With a chair and a tablet and a water bottle. And a mouse. This actually looks a lot my, like my desk. Wouldn't you know? I often make models in Blender and import them into Clip Studio Paint. You know what? One time, I was doing a commission for a friend, and uh, she was having a hard time, like, um, communicating something to me, and she made like. A rudimentary like setup in blender to show me like the perspective she was thinking of and I was like oh okay that's really helpful honestly love it love to see it oh, come on come on There we go. That's the stuff. Okay, I think I'm gonna finish this chair. Maybe hide that. Why can't I see this chair very well? This chair is kind of funky, that's why. Oh! finish this chair and then we can uh, talk about some neat like recent updates and stuff like sticker updates clip of the week cool other stuff talk about next stream which is tomorrow what we're gonna do things for the future theater updates cool things that's a funky- that's a funky leg, but you know, we're gonna have to live with it. I mean, it looks f fine far away. We're not gonna see it that close, so, you know. That's it. That's the room. No. There we go. Getting somewhere. I always feel like I'm drawing things wrong, but sometimes things are just weird. You know, I- that's how it feels like sometimes when you're, like, tracing stuff, especially with certain perspectives, there's gonna be a bunch of tangents and stuff that you don't consider until you're drawing things literally. You know, that's just how it is. That's just how it is. Anyway, my food's gonna be here soon. So, let's chill out. Start to wind down a bit. But don't hit that dial. Don't hit that dial quite yet. We have some things to talk about. You guys want to see the clip of the week from uh, the Cult of the Lamb stream? Because it was it was a doozy. It was a doozy. I'm going to drink some water as it's happening. And I don't want to make eye contact. It's weird. Join the cult, Mune. Join my cult. I mean cult. I mean cult. I mean cult. I mean cult. My, my cult. Anyway. Himble Bimble. Himble, you are here. Cat gang. Cat gang. Cat gang. Aw, oh, sick. Let's go. Oh my god, you look evil. You are materialistic and you loved... Coprophiliac, that's awful! Oh wait, I can read your mind. Nimble, what are you thinking? No! I don't like it! I don't like that! No! No! Why are- Moonpie has many game? things to say. Oh. Anyway, I just need a bully 
himbo, 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 himbo. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you guys like the clips. They're fun. They're fun to make. Uh, if you would like to clip any part of my streams, I at the end of a stream week, right after right after Sunday, I pick the best clip of the week. Uh, generally, like the most popular clip from that week, and I will edit it down to something fun and exciting like that. So, so that that is a fun and exciting thing. Uh, we have no new fan art, but I really enjoy this fan art that. Uh, but we found you did. It's a little bookmark me. A little bookmark me. Awesome. Really cute. I love this. I love how swirly the, the little red like streak is. It's so cute. But new chat member but we found you did this. And if you have any fan art, you can join the Discord and you can post it in the fan art uh, chat. Or you can post it on Twitter. You can at me. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I tabbed out for a second on accident. Um, or you can uh, use the tag Spoonie Arts and I can find it that way. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, if you haven't seen what the lobby looks like now, this, okay, I need a more recent video. All of that trim, all that white right there, that is now painted. That is now painted. Yeah. All the, all the trim right there, it's all painted now. All that's left to do is the floor. The tar needs to be cleaned up on the floor and maybe get lacquered so it's more level. Um, that is the latest update with the theater. Um, if you would like to know more about the theater, tell us. We'll find bird bones and skeletons in the theater. Oh, we saw some today. We saw some in the in the in the back rooms, in the dressing rooms. Um, but the theater's birthday was just two days ago. It was September first. It is ninety five years old now, and it really helps. Like donations toward the theater really help uh, with the restoration of the theater. Oh, thanks, Nightbot. Um, so any contribution helps. Any any contribution at all. Five bucks, ten bucks, one dollar, it all helps. Trust me. So if you would like to donate, even if we're not fundraising for the theater, it is greatly appreciated and it goes uh, into the community because we have to pay people to do plaster. We gotta pay people to get on a crane lift and uh, do some do do some stuff around the roof. You know, all that kind of deal. All that kind of deal. <clears throat> all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. Oh, the latest thing that was up on Patreon. We got some Zale and uh, two new Ezra sprites, I believe. Uh, so if you would like to join Patreon, you can see weekly concept art. Uh, I'm also going to be posting a time lapse of Zale's uh, bedroom. Probably sometime today or tomorrow morning. Um, so that's going to be up for patrons as well. Also, if you have a sub, if you are sub to this Twitch, you can join the Discord and you can go to the exclusive channel for subs and patrons and you can see the weekly concept art posted in there. So that's a neat little perk. So if you are not subbed, you can sub to the chat or Twitch. What the fuck ever? I don't know words. They're gone. But... Yes, those are the benefits. Time lapse going up tomorrow, probably. And sticker shop, sticker shop update. Newest stickers are Sly Cooper stickers. So if you're a fan of Sly Cooper and you would like the Cooper gang as stickers, they are up in my Etsy shop. You can check them out. Those are really fun to make. I have a Cricut machine. I really enjoy making stickers and they come to you pretty fast. Pretty fast. Love it love to see it it's also a uh, cycling rotating stock so be sure to get those stickers when they're in the shop because they won't be in there forever and they will become convention exclusive eventually so without further ado thank you everybody for coming moon pie is yelling at me she really wants food um i appreciate we got some work done we got some work done we got a lot of work done today we got Zale's uh, room done, and we got Ezra's not done, but we did get some work done. We got a desk drawn, we got an hourglass drawn, 
Got some good stuff going on. Got some good stuff. Real exciting. Let's see. Let's see who's out there to raid. Then I can go eat. I'm gonna figure out who's out there to raid. Let's let's go, baby. Tabby is playing Saints Row. Oh, Adi's playing uh, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Fuck yeah! We're going to Adi. We're going. <laughs> we're going to Adi. We were just talking about Final Fantasy VII. Let's go. Uh, I think she might be near the end. So uh, if you don't want spoilers, get out of here. But uh, what should our uh, raid phrase be? What should we say? What should we say to Adi? <laughs> Let's just do a wiggle. Wiggling on in for a raid. Wiggling on in for a raid. Alright. Have a great night, everybody. I'm gonna have my falafel.